Hey kid, don't ever let them get inside your head They'll tell you what to do in life instead Of everything you know that you could get Don't let them guide your life towards regret I'll fight for what I love with every breath My past is filled with things I won't forget I use them all to push me to my best So treat the worst of times just like a test If only I could go back in time I'd tell myself that everything will end up alright Just push yourself, test yourself, figure out what you like And find your limits, don't be rigid, always work towards a prime Surround yourself with open minds, people can change your life A few friends with intent can help you feel alive Find a passion, take some action, and with a little time Just be patient, make a statement, try to enjoy your life They'll try to kick you while you're down they wanna rise up while you drown They wanna fill your head with doubt They're silently scared that you'll figure it out I'll make it look like I'm losing Won't bother hiding my bruises And when they finally think you're wounded Then it's your chance to be ruthless I can see that they compare I think everyone's against me Maybe something in the air Am I paranoid? I swear a void is forming And they're scared I walk a straight path Not many can say that I'd like to play fast Cross me and there's payback You better pray that I don't see your face at Any place that I go I know you hate that I've been doing fine I'm not wasting any more time I live for the fight and the climb I think that the pain that's deep inside is what defines So I won't give up, I'm gonna make it to the top I don't care what's in my way, I swear I'm never gonna stop If I could fall flat on my face and I swear I won't get back up Cause I don't deserve a thing and the road ahead is tough They'll try to kick you while you're down They wanna rise up while you drown they wanna fill your head with doubt They're silently scared that you'll figure it out I'll make it look like I'm losing Won't bother hiding my bruises And when they finally think you're wounded Then it's your chance to be ruthless Coward's heel 
Start my own. Oh, my God, we'll have our home again. My God, we'll have our home. My blood or sweat will get there yet. My God, we'll have our home. Oh, my God, we'll have our home again. My God, we'll have our home. My blood or sweat. We're going to make it so. Today's featured stories, Maryland Democrats, Bill would block people under 25 from being charged with felony murder. Also, fossil fascism, the far right video, we'll be reviewing some of that. Go free lesson of the day. I'm right about Ye's law, and you won't believe who agreed with me. We will also go back and cover another aspect of that Maryland Democrats bill during the Go Free Lesson of the Day. From the glossary, Miss Pretexts, what are they? Why don't you know what they are? And the MP, bottom heavy white women should be with non white men. We'll speak to that and what the answer should be. Your comments, calls, and questions. And then there's this a tough old cowboy counseled his granddaughter that if she wanted to live a long life, she had to sprinkle a pinch of gunpowder on her oatmeal every morning. The granddaughter did this religiously until she died at the ripe old age of 103. When she finally died, she left behind 14 children, 30 grandchildren, 45 great-grandchildren, 25 great great grandchildren and where the crematorium used to be a 40 foot crater <laughs> And we are going free. Woo! Ladies and gentlemen, it's fantastic to be here with you. A light, very light snow falling in the once great state of Virginia outside of Mordor on the Potomac at what is now 5 as p.m. as we've leapt forward. 5 p.m. here in that once great state. It is maybe 7 in uh, Sydney, maybe 10 in London, somewhere around there, or midnight in Moscow. But we know it's 5. <laughs> in the once great state of Virginia. You can see Mordor over my shoulder. It has been a semi-pleasant day, but it's going to get much more glorious with you all, even if some wet snow does fall. Entropy is up and running. If you would like to financially gift, you can head on over there and you can financially gift to yours truly. I deeply appreciate it. You may also write in the question widget, talk Kevin widget over there. It will not disappear for you or roll away as it does elsewhere. Only you or I can delete it. You may also head on over to Odyssey, which is over to my left, your right, and you can leave their financial gifts or comments or questions. You can financially gift in their cryptocurrency, or you can financially gift in cash dollars over there. Also to my left, your right, you can head on over to D Live, where you can financially gift in their very weird library cryptocurrency tokens. 
You may do that, or you can head on over to my right, your left, and go into Cash App. You can find all of these directions by heading down into the description below. Break out your repelling gear and have some fun. Head on over to Cash App, where you can financially gift both in cash and in a cryptocurrencies, the ones that they offer over there. And I will be checking all of these over the course of the gathering. Anything financially gifted, said, question, comment, whatever it might be. I will read, even if I have to change it a little bit to protect myself and the channel and the integrity of the good work that we are doing here in service to white well-being, ladies and gentlemen. How's the microphone? Great to see you all. How are the visuals? Everything looking fabulous as always? I do hope so that that is the case. If you would like to financially gift with a cryptocurrency, does anybody do that anymore? When uh, the feds are trying to make it illegal to hold that currency, as we just saw in South what, Dakota? Where was it that this just happened? And they've had to veto the bill over there. If you would like to do that, you can head on over to knowwhyguilt.org. You click on the financial gift tab and you will see five of the wallets that we use there for cryptocurrencies. Please do if you feel so inclined. You will also find there a snail mail address where you can reach yours truly by snail mail if you're one of the old timers. It's a very exciting day to be in service to white well-being. This week is going to be a glorious week, as are so many of the others. Why? Because we make it so, damn it. And we're going to continue to make it so. We're going to start off with the action item today, which, of course, is heading over to my Twitter account or heading over to the Great Slots Twitter account, and you will find a tweet created by the Great Slots to the great Luke Mason, also known as Eminem Rain, and his album set to be released in April 30th, 5 p.m., The Legend of Prometheus. That is the name of the album, telling the story of my book, Prometheus Rising, Take Back Your Destiny in Promethean Rock, as he has termed it, a truly epic, epic musician in service to white well-being. Thank God we have the great slots preparing our people. That's what these tweets are for. You can grab the tweet, retweet it. You can take a screenshot, share it across all of your media. We want folks to know that the great Luke Mason is going to be releasing this album and the final track on that album, song number nine. Really looking forward to that. Please do that. We'll mention it again in the regular announcements later in the gathering, but we're going to very quickly get to the swashbuckling announcements, so that we can get through them and to our main story today, our first story at least, which is Maryland Democrat Bill would block people under 25 from being charged with felony murder. You think, oh, it's not going to go anywhere. <laughs> the anti-whites are so silly. Well, they keep winning. They're so silly. All of your laughing and all of your mocking and all of your ridicule, and they keep winning. We'll be getting to that in a moment. First thing we're going to do is we're going to mention that the advertisement for the Go Free audiobook is rocking it. It's costing a lot of money. It's costing a lot of money, but it is rocking it over there on Gab. If you come across it, take a screenshot of whatever you might do, then go find it on Amazon, then tag the URL on it, paste it across all of your social media, yet again, a way that you can contribute to the great work that we are doing here in service to white well-being once and for all. No more of these criticisms, no more of the complaint, well, Jason, I can't read. No more of that. You can just listen to me gloriously as you go down the highway, blasting my voice into the vicinity so that all pedestrians and other drivers and people on motorcycles will be able to get into the go-free lexicon and dialectics, which save Western kind. One man, one woman, one child at a time, a curative contagion spreading across the world, sprouting white roses everywhere it goes. The Go Free audiobook is available. Make sure that you get it. Make sure that you write a positive review about how gloriously it is read to you by yours truly, Jason No White Guilt Kuna. Also, Big gratitude. Check out in the description below. You will find the brand new Go Free Club started by Victorian time traveler called the Four Corners GFC. 
the Four Corners GFC. You know where that is and what part of the United States. You could participate in person. You could participate if he decides to do that. You could participate digitally. So that means anywhere around the world, electronically, you could be a member of that epic GFC coming on the scene. This is how we change things. All around the world, we have GFCs. How exciting is this? And they continue to sprout. We love it. Big gratitude. Another. Let's get more 07s. 07s to Victorian Time Traveler. 07s to Elaine Sabatino. For more communication, I am finding out with the great king. Uh, the great king, Mark Dice. Let's give it up for both of these champions. The King Dice. King Dice. And the great Elaine Sabatino. Speaking with him. We love it. We love these folks. We love King Dice. We will shout his name from the rooftops. Fighting, combating anti-whiteism with all the good people of all immutable characteristics in Western kind to put an end to our victimization and the destruction of our great countries across the world, ruining everything for everyone who lives inside. Great 07's raucous emojis for Mr. Fournall, who has created a new video. We'll be playing that over the course of this gathering today. It is called Dead USA. There's a lot to learn there. It's featuring yours truly, Fournall. So many talent. He's a polymathic, this man. Polymathic. Give it up for him with some salutes with some diamonds, sprinkle some diamonds before the great four. No, ladies and gentlemen, throw him out some diamonds. Stick around, folks. We're almost done with the swashbuckling, and we're going to get into the swashbuckling announcements with this epic swash, epic swash here today. And we're going to get into murder, decriminalized. You think it can't happen? It's going to end up happening. Maybe not with this bill, but soon enough. And we're going to be talking about it at least twice today. At least twice today, it's that important. The really important part of it, you'll be hearing during the Go Free lesson. Make sure you don't miss that. That's right after the first segment. We're going to celebrate right now uh, the great Fournall and Andre Moisejev. We're going to be speaking more to that later in the uh, gathering today at the regular announcements. We're going to pull up the website. We're going to uh, we're going to take a look at the Fournall's great game as he's been. Uh, as, as he's been amending it and improving it. I played. It is hilarious, even when you go the wrong direction and you get the worst points. But finally, we're going to share this right as we get into our story of the day and then into this video about the far right threat and what that exactly means. Check it out. We shared this a couple of weeks back now. It is the great reptile. He is here right now celebrating. Celebrate. This is epic swap. This is pure swash, man. You want to get some pure swash? Hey, buddy, you want some swash? You want to get some pure swash? Man, this will take you to the moon, buddy. This will take you all the way to the moon. The purest of swash. It's going to hit hard. Blows the back of your head off. That's how good the swash is around here. He discovered with this jersey that he made, he decided, you know what? The crap bowl is coming up. This is the NFL, the crap bowl. And he decided, you know what? He's going to make a jersey. And look at this jersey. We showed you how epic this is. 95 for the nine words and five key concepts. We had the five key concepts uh, up just before we got started here today. There is, of course, the Eindelin. The nine words, the five key concepts. He's been wearing this jersey around town. And you would not believe. You would absolutely not believe. You're going to have to wait to find out later in the gathering today how gloriously this is working out for him, how gloriously, therefore, it's working out for our people, his family, our community, our countries, our Western civilization. Men of all ages are coming up to him. What jersey is this? What team is this? The jersey is beautiful, they're telling him. Tell me more. Tell me more. Well, folks, you're going to want to find out more, and you're going to find it out in just another 20 seconds. Hey, we are excited here today. We're going to have a lot of fun. Make sure that you let people know 
in all your circles of influence that we're rolling, we're live, we left forward. It is that time of year so that we can save daylight or whatever it is they claim that's being done and that uh, they are going to be late. They're going to be late if they're waiting for another hour before they show up. Let them know, please let them know now before we get any deeper into this undoubtedly, what will undoubtedly be a scintillating going free as we have so many of them. Let's get into this Maryland issue right now. I'll pull it up on the screen and we shall read together. Let me change the sizes here. There we go. Let's figure out what this is all about. Have you all heard about this? Let's figure out what this is all about. Maryland Democrats bill would block people under 25 from being charged with felony murder. Now, on the thumbnail, you probably saw these two lovely, lovely women. Wonderful. They're just so beautiful. They want to victimize Western kind in every imaginable way. One of them is a is is in the federal government. The one on the right is the one on the right is the sponsor of this bill in the state of Maryland. And it makes you it makes you think for a moment, you know, may, is it, is she wanting to pass this because she's got some she's got a few one or two or more relatives that are kind of thuggish, that are kind of like gangster like and uh, she thinks, wow, they're going to get into trouble. And I want to prevent that from happening. I'll just I know what I'll do. I'll just decriminalize murder. Don't do don't make the mistake. Do not make the mistake that so many white people make. Uh, that this is funny, that this is silly, that you should just laugh at this. There's nothing funny about this stuff. This is hardcore poisonous anti-whiteism, hardcore poisonous anti-whiteism. And this kind of stuff. You'll laugh at today. You'll think, oh, that's not going to get passed. Not today. It won't get passed today. Well, probably not. It probably won't pass this next session in Maryland, but it's going to pass. This kind of thing and worse will pass. And it's not going to end up being uh, the young uh, white men who are under 25 that will be able to find this reprieve find their their vicious crimes perpetrated against the population mollified by a caring and concerned anti-white regime. Oh, no, this is only going to apply to everyone else. And you'll find out this is already happening on planet Earth somewhere. Care to guess? Democrat bagged legislation becoming lightning rod as considered in state legislature. Let's jump on by this. Maryland Democrats are pushing a bill in the state legislature that would prevent anyone under the age of 25 from being charged with felony murder. This is a very serious thing. When you have a uh, what we have in the United States now, a democracy, and always keep in mind, keep in mind now, you can have conversations about democracy, but, but don't, it, it, generally speaking, you don't want to go to war against uh, the concept of democracy with our brothers and sisters out there because they are pre-programmed to go to war for democracy, to kill people abroad and to be fine with killing people abroad for democracy. They're programmed for that idiocy. The bottom line, though, is that this country is filling up, is filling up. And I will give you maybe just a little teaser. How about a little teaser for a roll in maybe later this week? Have you all thought about this? I want to know what you're thinking. Mexico, Republicans now chattering garrulously, garrulously about war with cartels in Mexico. Does that concern you at all? Well, we had a couple American citizens that went down there for what were they actually doing? Was it a drug run? Was it actually a tummy tuck? Was it? I don't know. I don't know what it was. The cartel ends up attacking and killing a couple of them, and then the other ones they let go, and whatever it's happening. And now the Republicans are 
Republicans and some Democrats very excited about the prospect of war with cartels. Now, I will submit to you, if we had a government, say, run by yours truly, war with the cartels, you could feel very confident, is going to go 100% good for us, right? Would be 100% good for Western kind. I would melt those parts of Mexico and it would be glorious. The drugs would stop. And when the Mexican president would say, oh, I complain, I complain. I would just say, OK, well, now you're pushed out of power and we'll find one of your friends down there. In fact, we'll just we'll head down to the local Tijuana bar and we'll grab one of them who will be president and do exactly as Jason says in Mexico. That's what we'll do, because we don't have to submit ourselves to the whims of these anti-white motherfuckers anymore when Jason is in charge. All right. But what does this mean for you? If the Republicans, anti-whites as well, anti-white lights, go to war in Mexico, it means refugees. It means Mexico spills into the United States from the war-torn, bomb-to-hell country of Mexico. Mark my words. Maybe we'll have a rolling on it later in the week. Here's the thing, though. You're bringing in people from places in the world that predominantly it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you, the, the little the little Republican voter there, the little nationalist, the little, oh, I'm a, I'm a Tea Party person. I went to those rallies. I'm looking at you. You're thinking, but I know a really based guy from El Salvador. Yeah, well, so do I. So what? He's one in 10,000. You have you go to war for democracy. You kill people. You support killing whole countries for democracy. And you are very excited about the one out of 10,000. Can you not count? They vote overwhelmingly. We see from the results. Of course, it's my opinion. Check it out for yourself. CNN may say different or they may agree but I agree with them even if they disagree with themselves. They may say these folks are going to come in and they're going to, they, some of them are going to vote conservative. Some of them are going to vote Republican because they're real church. Go what exactly does it mean, of course, to be a real church goer done? Nevertheless, I digress. They vote for things that white erase us from civilization. Now, I want to spell this out very clearly. This could be part of the lesson of the day as well. When things like this happen, when ideas march forward, and we'll revisit this later in the gathering a little bit more thoroughly than we're going to right now, because we're going to get on to the video about the far right threat. And we'll be reviewing that, taking your questions, comments, calls, etc. today. But when we see something like this, Let's decriminalize murder for people under 25 years of age. When we see something like that, what is it that we are focused on here in service to white well-being? It's a big thing. It's a really big thing. What we are focused on is the white erasure of our norms, of our mores, of our customs, of what we believe is normal, of what we project onto the world, that projection being Western civilization. What have conservatives, great people but misled, what have Republicans, what have they done to stop any of this? When these sorts of things come forward, what do the talking heads, the Tucker Carlson's and all of these, the Kilmeads and all the rest, what do they say to you? They say, this is crazy. Can you believe how crazy they are? And then they have a little laugh and then they'll point out the hypocrisy. Well, look at the hypocrisy. They even do it in this article. What a big shock. It's a Fox article. The hypocrisy of, well, you can't understand that killing someone is the end of that person's life and all the ramifications of that. That person doesn't get to live out all of the hopes and dreams and, and anguish and everything else that they would have lived. All the people around, you can't understand that. But when you're five years old, you can figure out what gender you are and you can begin undergoing uh, chemical castration. And all. They can look at the hypocrisy of it. 
They'll mock the hypocrisy. They'll shake their heads. Golly, golly, darn it. Golly, golly. Can you believe? And you even see that across the alt media, the so-called alt media, the biggest channels. People like uh, Cracker Salty over there is 30,000 watching live, and he's going to go over there and say, can you believe they? Can you believe them? Can you believe these? You're going to see that sort of shit. And it doesn't ever do anything for us. It never leaves you with an understanding that empowers you and empowers our people. An argument loaded with unspoken uh, premises that strengthen you, that recapture our destiny. I did that here. We do that here. What do you focus on when they talk about decriminalizing murder? You focus on white erasure of our norms. Our norms are murderers go to hell and we give them a very swift ride to hell. That is what we do in the West. That is how we create Western civilization. You want to do it another way? It's not crazy. It's not quirky. It's not just bizarre. It's not, unless you're just talking about it sort of flippantly to say, well, that's nuts. That's not the meat of the story. That's not what you want to be left with. What you want to be left with is this is white erasure, white erasure of our norms. Everybody got it? This is how we reclaim our destiny. We should have 30,000 watching live here. We'd be making a big difference in the world if we did. Make sure you get the URL out there. Make sure you share the clips that are made. Make sure you take my energy that I'm sending out into the universe to you to inflame and impassion you. Because my friends, this is the real camp of the saints. The, we are ringed by the devil and his minions, my friends. And there are far too few defenders. This is it. This is Helm's Gate from Lord of the Rings. This is it. We have to blow that horn. We have to let the people know how they have to engage on these subjects, how we have to talk about these things so that we come away from this. Not another imbecile, not another hollow take, not another novelty take, not another vapid, insipid, worthless idea relative to this. But what really matters that we and what we create are being white erased. Democrat Delegate Charlotte Churchfield introduced into the Maryland General Assembly the Youth Accountability and Safety Act. So it's always Orwellian. It's, a, it's not like uh, we're going to let all the murderers go act. We're going to let all the murderers go act. No, it's always this Orwellian Youth Accountability when it's actually the opposite of accountability, right? It's the opposite of accountability. You're saying, well, you can murder people. You can murder them and get away with it. That's the opposite. And then, and safety? act. Who's safety? What are you talking? I mean, we are nearing the point, thanks to this absolutely flaccid. By the way, that's the way it's pronounced, just so everybody knows. It's, it's flaccid, double C, flaccid, flaccid. This flaccid, response this anemic response is why we why we have things like youth accountability and safety you know what's coming is it's the roses and uh, babies resurrected from the grave act oh wow what does that do well it actually executes all white people what what i'm what did you say what was that which would prohibit a person younger than 25 at the time of the offense from being convicted of first degree murder under the state's felony murder provisions. <laughs> Sounds just like the West. Sounds just like America. Under these provisions, murder is classified as being in the first degree if it was committed during the perpetration or attempted perpetration of several specified crimes, such as rape, arson, robbery, burglary, carjacking, and other serious offenses. I wonder what our country would look like if none of our norms had been white erased, if none of our mores had been white erased. I wonder if there would ever be a word as carjacking, because when you get executed, when we put you on Procrustes' bed and we rip your damn limbs off for this kind of shit, it kind of has a way of discouraging it from happening. 
It kind of prevents people from behaving in a way that damages civilization. And this is the thing. You can't listen. We're going to be talking about miss pretexts, right? Later in the gathering. Don't miss it. You're going to want to learn so you can stop being a dumbass, right? You could be like all the champions who are here. You see them writing in the live chat. You can be like them too. Be like the champions, okay? You're going to learn about miss pretexts. We don't listen to what's the purpose of some anti-white saying, well, let me tell you about the why we what we do with the uh, criminal justice system and what the what's the purpose of uh, of putting people in prison. The purpose is actually to try to rehabilitate them so that they can be better citizens of the. No, that is like tertiary at best. The purpose of law and order is civilization. Don't ever let these people talk to you again. Never hear, never listen to a word they say. We kill people for murdering people. And there's a difference. We kill people for murdering folks so we can have civilization. All right. We yank their limbs off in a healthier time, all their limbs off in a healthier time for civilization. Okay. It, it, we don't put them into confined boxes. We don't put them into little metal boxes so they can be better. No, some of them we say, you're going to be punished like hell and uh, you didn't go far enough. So at some point you're going to be let back out. And since you're going to be let back out, we don't want you to harm civilization anymore, which means going out there and finding a victim. Okay, we don't want that to happen anymore. So we're going to give you some training and all the tertiary shit. The life of the you listen to their arguments. And that's why now in the past, your your parents and grandparents and granddaddy and grandmammy sat around and they're like, oh, that's an interesting thought there. How we want to help out these uh, criminal types now today because they listen to that shit. Now you have to endure the criminal being the one whose life is valuable. That's what you have to endure. As a consequence of them listening to that. Now, there isn't even a thought for the victim. Rape victim? Pfft. No, the rapist. What was it that was going on in his or her life that led him or her to this state where they just felt they had to lash out? I think we should just forego punishment because really the best thing to do to these victims who committed the rapes is to coddle them. Can Should there be a judgment against white taxpayers so that we can coddle this rapist? I think so. That's going to be the next bill. You have to listen to that shit because our grandmammies and granddaddies listen to the mispretexts of their time. Does that make sense? How's the mic working? Are we good on the mic? Looks like we're good. But with Churchfield's proposal, which has the support of several Democrat co-sponsors, anyone under the age 25 who murders someone while trying to commit one of these other you know, misdeeds couldn't be charged with first-degree murder, a crime that in Maryland carries life imprisonment with or without the possibility of parole. I really don't get the this, this removal of execution. I mean, what is it? Maryland doesn't have a penis. Is that the problem in Maryland? No penis or balls in Maryland. Why would you want to take somebody who murders or who deserves death and then pay for them to live the rest of their lives? They can just hang out and prison. This is not like prison in uh, Mexico or something. This is not like prison in Turkey or in Saudi Arabia. The United States, it's a walk in the beach compared to these other places. Why would you pay for that? I have another option, though, for all of these people who have, you know, they just, they don't know, not very comfortable with the state executing people. Wars, though, whatever, good with that, but not totally comfortable with the state executing people. All right, fine. Uh, we'll just have the banished from the country. That's what Jason would do if Jason were in charge. Banished from, oh, you are, you've done this or that. And I would go to the entire prison population. And I would say, look, you can get out of jail today. You're banished from the U.S. and you can never return because that is immediate execution upon your return. So you could take ban. And then we don't pay for any of these scum. We just get rid of it. Wouldn't that be nice? It would be it would go from the United States has the largest prison population. White people are evil to the United States 
is is rehabbing all of the prisons into luxury condos for young white couples who want to have massive families. And the requirement is going to be that all of the children have to go to the uh, Brant Danger School of the West and they're all going to learn to go free and they're all, and they're going to be inoculated against anti-whiteism and they're going to take back our destiny. How does that sound for you? This is already happening in the world. Are you ready to get mad? Are you ready to get absolutely pissed off? Where is this already happening in the world? Our once great country of South Africa. That's where it's already happening in the world, isn't it? Isn't it? When this passes in the United States, just like our once great country of South Africa, there'll be no murders. They will all be, there'll be no rapes. There'll all be robberies gone wrong. It was just another burglary gone wrong that became ritualistic gang rape and slaughter of the whole family. Just another burglary gone. They just wanted to come in because they're down and out because of what the white race has done to them. Nothing but excuses. And many of you are still like, oh, but what can we do to make them feel better? What can we do to, so they won't do this to us? What, what we can do so they won't do this to us is kill all of them who do this to us. That's what we can do, you dumb bitch. Shut your mouth. Stop trying to placate. I got a new placation. I got a new placation. It's called Public Gallows, baby. Public Gallows, 150 of them. Strange fruit. Mother, that's what it is. That's what we do to those who come and ritualistically rape, torture, and murder. Public gallows. And then they're left up there because they're then called bird feeders. This, there would never be another murder in Maryland or in anywhere else. Every single murder would be a robbery or burglary gone wrong, an arson gone wrong. How much time do you get for arson? Where was that thing I just read recently? Did you all just read this? I just read this recently the other day. I wish I had taken it down. I didn't have time. There was a woman who, obviously a deranged, sick psychopath woman. You can look for this. She had sex with a child. And I believe, you know, this this goes to what Sharika is talking about, all of this child abuse that she was talking about. We're going to have her on again, uh, I believe, this week about the child abuse and sexual exploitation in the black community. And I think this was a black woman that did this to a, a young uh, black male child. She had sex with him and then she went went to court and said, oh, no, 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 look. It wasn't it wasn't rape of a child. It wasn't, a, you know, molestation or anything. It was just incest. It was just what? Because incest, wherever she lives, is just like a fine. What do you mean it's a fine? It's still a child. Get this. She wasn't even biologically related. But they allowed that to go through probably because she's part of the one of the angelized group. And so they allowed that to go through. Of course, the boy's mother is like, she's not even related. What the hell? But the way they, she said, the way the, way the, ar the lawyers argued was that, uh, well, he calls me mama. He calls you mama and you raped him? What do we take away from that? White erasure of Western norms, our norms. That's what we take away from it. You don't, you don't say, well, look at that community over there. <laughs> look, can you believe what they were doing over there? You know what I'm talking about? Huh? Huh? You know what I'm talking? You don't do that shit. This is white erasure of our norms. That's what you take away from this. If, if our norms, our customs, et cetera, weren't being white erased, and that's what happens. It's not that these people or those people or those people have crazy ideas. It's that when you wage war on Western kind and everything it produces, and you get rid of it, you white erase it, you insert the opposite. Well, Western kind uh, had a problem with child molestation. Well, we'll just fix that. We'll just fix that. 
Western kind, what, they gutted people while they were alive for that kind of thing? Holy shit. Well, we'll just say it's totally legal. That's what you take away from it. If there's any God in heaven, he's going to make my voice bounce off the fucking moon tonight and reach everybody across the West. The bill has become a lightning rod with critics arguing the effects of such a proposal becoming law could be devastating. Quote, if this bill passes, you're going to have kingpins. You're going to have gangs use juveniles to do their dirty work. Republican Susan McComas told local Fox affiliate WBFF. Lame, Susan. Lame. Very lame. You're going to have kingpins. You already have gangs already use juveniles. That's not something that's going to happen. They already use juveniles because we already have a system in place that boxes up all of those offenses under 18 so that it doesn't follow us throughout life. It's already in place, Susan. The problem is white erasure of our norms, Susan. Can you get some backbone and say that? And if you can't, if if you're too uh, delicate for that, maybe you should take your split tail ass out of the authority positions so that we could get some real men. And I mean men, not another one of these gelded males up there. Talk about they're everywhere, these gelded males. Forget about it. We don't want any of them either. Law enforcement officials express similar sentiments. Quote, the solution is not changing the law to excuse or make excuse for the violator. Really? Yeah. Really? Thanks for saying that again. Maybe your approach is garbage. The answer is not coming up with excuses for the violator, said the county sheriff. The process that needs to be in place is to hold that person accountable. Well, thank who do you tell this to? Who are you talking to like this? Don't, don't you realize, white people, now I'm speaking just to the white people. Don't you realize, I'm, look, all you out there, I'm looking, I see you, the white people out there. Don't you realize that you have dumbed down your uh, argumentation because you think it's a matter of anti-whites not understanding you? No, you see, they get you. They just hate you. They want to get rid of you. Stop being such a limp-wristed bitch. Good God. I, I think they must not uh, understand. You talk to kindergartners this way. You talk to a kindergartner this way. When somebody does something wrong, they're a little Johnny and Janet. You got to hold them accountable. You don't talk to adults. You should be smart enough to realize that it's not a lack of understanding. It's a fact of hatred for you. Anti-white hatred. By the way, just as an aside, how many of you out there understood by childhood that when something died, that was the end of its living and that that was a, a profound thing? That was a very profound thing. Now, if this is something that is, I mean, there's, they appear to be arguing that everybody else doesn't view it this way. But in the West, we view it this way very, very early in life. And it might be just a, a difference then. I don't know. I, I don't know. It might just be a difference. I don't know. But as a child, I was able to, I, I and my friends, we were able to realize if, a, if our pet dies, then it, it's not living anymore. It can't enjoy another sunrise. It can, and we're just talking about animals. We weren't even... Going beyond a human life is infinitely more uh, terrible. We would say that, you know, Fido won't see another sunrise, won't be able to jump into my lap. I won't be able to enjoy Fido anymore. We understood that when something died, it was a terrible thing because it wasn't living anymore. And therefore, just killing something, ending its life for no reason whatsoever, was a grave thing. 
It was a grave, and when it happened to a human being, it was a, a deeply immoral, unethical, punishable thing for all of those ramifications. And here you have them stepping up to the plate and saying they can't understand until over the age of 25. Don't be misled by the conservative Republican leaders who are going to tell you, well, you know, the problem here is the hypocrisy because they say kids at five can figure out their gender. And they say kids, you know, in Maryland, 16 and 17 years old in some counties in Maryland, you can vote so they can vote. They can vote. They can uh, they can drive. They can go into the military. They can they can start drinking alcohol. There's so many things they just let them do. Uh, and yet they don't understand a life. That is not the takeaway. Murray Richards, a law enforcement expert and former police chief in Martinsburg, West Virginia, added that there's, quote, a crime wave of violence going on right now, close quote. But, quote, we're hung up on whether 25 year olds should be charged with murder, close quote. What error did he just make there? Tick, 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 tick. We, we are the contraction. We're, we're not doing anything, dumbass. I've been in I was in 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 Saneville working on the Hill with these conservatives telling them, stop saying we are doing this and we are doing that. You you cannot tell yourself that we are doing something and how do we remedy why we are doing this when you are not the motivation behind it? There are many layers to this. I'm going to go real deep on you, you all in the next segment. We're going to wrap this up. We're going to get to some of this video. But in the next segment, the Go Free segment, I'm going to go real deep on this. And it might be uh, territory, uh, intellectual territory that not everybody is uh, ready to trot or will ever be ready to trot. But we're going to go there nonetheless. But there are many levels here that you uh, that not only suggest but demand you don't take ownership in your language for the deeds of others especially the, the, the deeds that victimize us. Proponents of the bill argue the brain is still not fully developed until the age of 25. However, Republican opponents counter that Democrats only use mental capacity when it comes to crime policies. Well, here they come. Here come the march of the Republican dickless wonders. The dickless wonders. Here they come. You have the guys, uh, the Republican leadership, no dicks, no balls. Sorry for the language. Uh, and then you have the females stuffing uh, cucumbers in their pockets. Proponents of the bill say that the human brain is not fully formed in the frontal lobes until 25, said McComas. But yet we're doing other things in the General Assembly, letting children vote earlier and earlier, letting them get hormone inducing drugs to change their sex. Democrats are silly hypocrites. Five cities in Maryland currently allow 16, 17-year-olds. Another area of Maryland pushing to lower the voting age is Howard County. Don't live there. Uh, where the Board of Education is composed of eight members, including one reserved for a student. Elect really, this is amazing. The Board of Education has a student elected by sixth graders. Why not? As long as you can get to an anti-white outcome, right? All right, let's go ahead. We're going to dump this and we're going to get on to the video and uh, watch a little bit of that. Where do we have it? Where is the video, my friends? Good Lord, where is it? <laughs> maybe if I, maybe if I do this, <laughs> uh, we don't want to get rid of that though. Let's do this and that. And now it should pop up here for us. Make sure the sound is on. Yes. Let us continue. Why you can't ignore the far right trend. Uh, tell me if the sound is okay for you. The mythical Muslim invasion at bay. 
We will not receive even one Muslim because this is what we promised. This is why Poland is so safe. This Wait, did you just notice? Am I seeing something? Was that totally spliced together? Take a look at that. Was that totally spliced together? Like this guy, what he's saying there? ...is based on keeping the mythical Muslim invasion at bay. We will not receive even one Muslim because there. this is what we promised. This is why there. Poland is so safe. This is... So there were three, it looked like there were three cuts in that so that they could get to him saying something that they wanted to use. I'm not saying that he's not saying that, but for God's sakes, I mean, this is like self-parodic. It's like the person they interview is just like, and then in different clothing. And <laughs> Look at what he just said. Can you believe he said that? All right. Is the sound the sound is hearing? Okay. Denial on a whole nother level. A political track that positions fossil fuels as not only not a problem. So it's denial to say by keeping our country, in this case it's Poland is who he's speaking for, by keeping that country Western, West composed of Westmen men, women, and children of Western kind and saying, therefore, it's safe. It's it's as safe as it's going to be, right? It's as safe as what we are going to create, period, end of conversation. It's not going to be perfect, uh, but we we are, we have to live with who we are and what we are and we create standards and norms to deal with the malefactors or miscreants in our society. But whatever that's going to be, that's our normal. Whatever that, whatever that violence is going to be and that therefore level of safety, that's our normal. So it's you cannot say, it's just objectively you cannot say, it's denial to say that you're going to have safety in your country by keeping it white. It's going to be whatever that's going to be. It's the same thing. I mean, you could say for an Asian country, you could say for an Arab country, wh whatever they say, we're going to have safety. That's their that's their zero. That's their normal. You can't contradict that. The only way you can contradict it is with sophistry, with doublespeak, with an argument to undermine them so that you can get past this desire you can get past this defense so that you could get white people to lower our guard and then allow our countries to be populated by people with very different bio spirits. But as part of a national identity. There you go. Yeah, that's our that's our national identity. And this is this new argument. And we saw this now. It's showing up more and more places. This fossil fascism that you're going to see, as we talked about before, people across uh, the who consider themselves right wing are going to be using this verbiage. And please, when you see it happen, when you see them take up the verbiage of anti-whites to their own detriment, please come back here and tell us who they were. And and um, I'll say to the moderate, normally we don't allow like folks to come in and say, hey, this person said that or what. But if somebody comes in and they want to say, here's the name of somebody that uh, just used this verbiage from the, what the anti-whites are sharing, leave that up. I I, I want to see, I want to laugh at these people who take up the verbiage of anti-whites as soon as they make it, all of their lexicon, and when you use their terminology, you legitimize their ideology, take up their lexicon, but then look at our lexicon and say, that's silly. That's silly that you guys have words and stuff that must be protected against invading immigrants. We saw this type of fossil fuel nationalism at play throughout the 2000s and 2010s in Norway, as well as in Alternatives for Deutschland, Germany's far-right party's defense of lignite coal extraction within their borders. Wir stehen zur Braunkohle. Each time the formula was clear. Fossil fuels are a national identity, the effects of climate change are questionable, and the real threat is immigration. The far I don't, I, and that was a straw man 
I don't believe there is anybody out there who who are not totally insane who's saying that there's no climate change. The climate of the earth, in my opinion, is always changing. There are many scientists out there, in my opinion, who will say that where we are is in a, a stable period, to, period relative to other periods in the earth's history. So I don't know that no one's saying that. As far as I've ever heard, no one's saying the climate's not doing anything. It's just the same, stable every year from year to year, except, well, you know that that's not the case. Some summers are hotter or longer. Some other summers are shorter and cooler. I, this is, everyone knows this. The question is whether or not there's anthropogenic global warming or anthropogenic driven climate change. That's the argument. And you can hear, you can see here, and this is a, it's a really fascinating, I think, to be able to observe this and see that so many of, of these concepts, when they, when they come into, uh, to being, when they're just incipient, these, these new sort of anti-white concepts, how they wed them to the anti-white concepts that have come before in a way that empowers them. And how does it empower them? Is it taking place in some sort of uh, like empowerment bank in the sky? No, it's in the minds of the king people. That's how it empowers the new concepts because people are already programmed. And then you have the idiots who will take up their lexicon and use it as well. And then in a very short order, it's going to be fascinating to watch this sort of roll out and come together because you'll see that these things become, they're just like on the lips, these new, uh, these new concepts, these anti-Y concepts, or at least relatively no, new or less known. Our right has also at times adopted rhetoric of carbon vitalism, the notion that carbon dioxide emissions are actually good and fuel light. Poland's it's not, it's absolutely another straw man that this is, this is what the right wing is saying and remember that is uh that that measurement is only in the anti-white narrative we do not use that measurement we do not that that yardstick we break it over our knee you break it over your head that yardstick it it is worthless it is for them to control and you see how do they control a lot of people don't know how dangerous this right left metric is you're seeing right now how it's used to control it there there aren't a group of people who consider themselves right wing who are saying that carbon emissions are good and then a group that consider themselves left wing that say that every single emission is bad do you follow and people sort of colloquially know that well it's not quite totally accurate but then they'll still measure themselves to it They'll still set it up and then say, where do I stand? Who gives a shit? It's to harm you. So they've just set up this. Well, if you're right wing, then you're going to believe that carbon emissions are good. Now, what does that end up doing? That causes the, there to be a Bader Meinhof, this frequency illusion that People out there who already consider themselves right wing then look for that in right wing arguments and they do what? Adopt it. If you allow them to say that the right wing believes this and you're going to be measuring yourself by that same metric, you're going to end up in circles with a bunch of idiots saying, well, you know what? Actually, carbon is good. And that becomes a political platform. Was it yours or was it given to you? Now, this is totally irrespective of whether or not scientifically it is good or bad or indifferent or whatever. This is the sociopolitical dynamism, the kinetic energy of human beings and the thoughts that go through their heads and how to control this animal. Far-right environmental minister made this exact claim in 2016, arguing that CO2 released from Poland is a gas of life for living ecosystems, enabling them to become better and better. But at its simplest form, the far-right employs flat-out climate denial. Now, a politician 
trying to push back against an anti-white agenda will because they're they're dumb. I mean, just face it. Politicians are dumb. They're like the goofiest, the weirdest. If it was, you know, you have the family get togethers for church or for Christmas or whatever it is. And you have all like the normal family come over. And then you got the one you got like the the crazy aunt. And she's like, hello, everybody. And she's got like a giant hat on. And you're like, what in the is this and something like weird and a jacket that's a little too small it's like buttoned like right here and it's sticking out and she's like give us a kiss she's voted into office she's who's in charge you know they got the guy that would come over like the the really creepy uncle that some people had the creepy uncle and he would he would sit and he was just like always staring at people uh staring at the kids in kind of a weird way he's elected that's just politician. And so then they reach out into the world. They reach out into the world and, and they're like, well, what can I argue back? At? Well, here's some scientists pointing out that in uh, this period of Earth's history, the carbon was at a greater percentage in the atmosphere. And uh, these same scientists will point out that when carbon was higher, there was more diversity on of life. Uh both plant and animal on planet or they'll say this. I'm not saying they say this. Okay. It's geological. Don't argue with me. You go find it out for yourself. If you don't like it, you don't like it. Go find it out for yourself. All right. That does not make that the argument or the position that you should have. And you don't have to worry about it. If you're not measuring yourself by this metric, that is awful for you. OK, this right left metric oh, and then points to what they see as the real threat. We're seeing this all over Europe from Germany's far right CO2 is kein killer gas. to the far right party in Finland who campaigned Nine against again. climate action and the threat of immigration and came in second in the 2019 election. Across the Atlantic mm. in the United States, we've seen a prefiguration of fossil fascism in the form. Of OK, so there it is right there in the form of Trump. Very. Uh, how can I say this? This is entirely crafted point by point to wed the the destruction of the earth, the extinction of life on planet earth to populate. Forget about these political parties. The political parties are nothing more across the West are nothing more than attempts by business interests and this is something we'll talk about in the next segment. Business interests to benefit their businesses relative to other businesses in the West by using the energy of an angry population. Don't for a minute conclude that these political parties are, it's really to anthropomorphize in the big error that so many uber midwits and down. You got your uber midwit, your midwit, your midget wit and it from the uber midwit on down the anthropomorphize everything so many errors in thinking it's unbelievable i must be martian i don't even get this and they think well this is a manifestation of uh, the people this is a no this is an attempt by people with money and connections uh the wealthy who are behind the scenes to defend their wealth because they're individualistic they don't see themselves uh, almost entirely uh, as uh, a member of Western kind, a people with a single people with many countries, and they look out and they say, "Wow, there's all this energy of these people out there." And then they find your crazy aunt and uncle, and then they say, "Let's put them in the political office to do our bidding." And they, those individuals, have self-preservation at their heart. They want to be in the limelight. They want to have uh, the sex that comes from it, the wealth that comes from it. Uh, the popularity, the intellectual aggrandizement, they want their place at the trough. So they're going to say anything to that population of voters that's growing. And what is it? It's the discontent with anti-whiteism. It's the fury with the destruction of our countries, the white erasure of, of Western kind and Western civilization from the countries we created. That's the discontent. OK, they look out and they say, what do they want to hear? What are they talking about at their kitchen tables? I'll tell them that. Then the crazy aunt and uncle, they turn around to the business people and they say, I'll do whatever you want because you're going to give me the money. They'll give me the votes. You'll give me the money. 
so that I can have everything I just mentioned to you that they're out there to get. There are no patriot politicians. I right, get this out of your head. There'll be no voting and there'll be no violence. Period. And I will debate anyone on any of this and I will mow them down. I will mow them down like a crack riddled chimpanzee with an AK-47. Of the Trump regime. This flavor of fossil fuel nationalism looked like a doctrine of energy dominance. Since my administration will seek not only the American energy independence that we've been looking for so long, but American energy dominance. Staffing his White House with fossil fuel executives. Yeah, this is, uh, you see what they're doing there, misrepresenting the, the, the desire there and the objective, which is to not be reliant and therefore controlled on the sources of energy. That's something that that you have to have for an independent nation. That's something you have to have. So much of the problems with a country like China is that they've been allowed to make too much of what the U.S. needs. That's problematic for sovereignty. Okay, it has. This is a total. You'll get it. You'll get into conversations. In the coming months and years with anti-whites who will say, no, wanting to produce your own energy is fossil fascism. Your identity is the energy instead of energy independence as a requirement for sovereignty. It's like we need water. Well, what are you, some kind of H2O fascist or something? What do you want to kill all the not the brown and black and yellow babies in the red babies? Is that what it is? That's what you want to do because you just you're just H two O fascist. That's what you're looking at. These idiots, total bankrupt liars. Natives and industry apologists. Trump donned a coal miner's hat in one moment, vowing to they protect the coal to industry. Take that power and that wealth away from us, and we've ended the war on clean, beautiful coal. Okay, so power and wealth. Coming from a billionaire, you need wealth to have power. You need wealth to have power. Now, there is a way to have power without wealth. We've got it right here. That's why we keep winning. That's why I came up with this. That's why I figured this out. Because you cannot be on the plane where dollars are spent, where currency is spent. because. The anti-whites hold all the currency. They make the currency. And the backing for the currency is you're dead if you don't use it. That means it's more valuable than gold, more valuable than silver. For all these people who want to say, well, your currency has to be, or actually has no value. Oh, really? Here is a, a firearm aimed at your head. Does your life, is that valuable enough to make the currency legit? Idiots. I've argued with those people too. I swear, Martians set me down on this planet. So he understands for a nation to be sovereign, you need wealth and therefore, and as well, in addition, other means of power. Anti-whites, why would they want to take away your wealth and power? Because you're the West. Because you're white people. They know if they take away your wealth and power, they can victimize you. It's like going up to the, the king's castle and you're saying, not quite fair that you have this moat. Not quite fair that you have those uh, those high walls, the parapets and things. No, no, not good. Not good. You should really raise that, that, that wrought iron gate thing to uh, lower that drawbridge. It's not fair. And then uh, all the, the white gelded men on the inside and the, and the loser... Uh, white women on the inside, they're like, oh, well, we should really, to be fair, and then it's over. And we're putting our miners back to work. And then explain the importance of immigration control in the next. No issue is more central to public safety than the issue of immigration and border. Okay, they're trying to, uh, you see what they just did there? The exact opposite is taking place. This is a guy speaking to a population, remember, what is actually in his heart and what he's actually going to do and did do and will do or whatever, uh, we can know what he ends up doing, but what's actually in his heart, we don't know. 
He's speaking to the voters. He needs their votes. Does that make sense yet? He needs their votes. And so there is a lot we can be excited and happy about. This is why I like Donald Trump so much. It's why I love Donald Trump so much. Because it's what he means to the white population and good people of all immutable characteristics. It's the energy that we are able to stir because he's willing to heed it for the votes. And as an outsider, that's what he has to do. So remember, give a big bird to DeSantis. A big pelican Floridian bird to him. We need Trump for four more years to do good for Western kind. Not Trump himself, us. That energy we need. That normalization of these topics, like what's actually going on here, you can't have a borderless country, and it's on, on, many, on many reasons, but my guess what Trump is speaking to here for the voters is what I was speaking to a little earlier. It's called democracy. It's this little thing called democracy where if you let in enough people that will vote a certain way that's opposite to what the population that's here that is here wants, then your country is gone. There'll still be something called USA, but who gives a shit? Because the USA isn't a place on the map. It's in a it's in the biosphere of Western kind. That's where it exists. It doesn't, it's not a place on the map. It's only a place on the map as long as we're willing to say, this is a place on the map that's ours. No, there is no real estate agent in the sky. Security. In a typical American way, this strain of proto-fossil fascism asserts that fossil fuels aren't just essential for US freedom, but for American domination of the world. All these tendrils of far-right climate politics reveal the enthusiasm at like which that. fossil fuels are defended yeah, and venerated, while renewable transitions, especially in the form of wind turbines, are seen as an attack on the purity of the nation. Like in France, where far-right leader Marine Le Pen... A lot of the people who own these companies, first of all, a lot, a lot of these green companies, not all, are financed, are you know, millionaires, billionaires that are rapidly anti-white and then they are they get money from the the most anti-white parties in a country and so naturally the business interests behind somebody like Marie Le Pen who uh, are not thus positioned are going to want to push back against those business interests this is really look at this here these anti-whites are presenting Marie Le Pen, Donald Trump as people who care about Western kind. Anybody who would look at the, a politician today, I mean, any, anything called a politician today and say that's somebody who really cares about Western kind is a damn fool. And if you're from down home, the South in the United States, the Southland, to say that somebody is a damn fool is one of the... <laughs> It says it all, all right? It says it all. Equated immigrants with wind turbines. Les migrants, c'est comme les éoliennes. Tout le monde est d'accord pour qu'il y en ait, mais personne ne veut que ce soit... And in the US... What, what, no, what, no? <laughs> What's the... Les migrants, c'est comme les éoliennes. Migrants are like wind turbines. Everyone agrees to have them, but no one wants them in their backyard. So she's, of course, talking about how, just like we had here in Martha's Vineyard, you move them up there. You know, you see how they missed the, the boat. And funny that I would use the word boat there. But do you see how they missed the boat with how to do, how to move these folks up to these areas? If they would have done it my way, if they would have hired me, if they would have done it my way, you'd, it would have been epic. It would be totally epic. It would still be taking place. You would be inundating their rapidly Democrat voting, anti-white areas. It would be beautiful. Instead, they did it this lame way. And then you see they brought out the military. So what she's saying there is uh, is perfectly in tune with reality. Anti-whites, she said, migrants are like wind turbines. Everyone agrees to have them. No, no. What do you mean everyone agrees to have them? This is the great, I, I keep hearing 
from white people. Marie Le Pen, you know, she's Marie. No, first of all, no female leaders. What in the fuck is wrong with you? No female leaders, period. But Jason, but Jason, none. End of it. Everyone agrees to have them. No, I don't agree to have them. I want my Western civilization. If I wanted to live in Vietnam or if I wanted to live in Brazil or if I, I would fucking move there. I don't want that here. If I wanted to live in Jamaica, I would fucking move there. I don't want them here. I don't want Jamaica here. I don't want Vietnam here. I, they're wonderful people. I want them to have great lives. So what? I don't want to live in those environments. I want them to have wonderful lives with their children, videotape their family parties, and they have a great time. And they and then we can even learn when we're growing. We can say, well, there's a country like Jamaica. And then here's what their customs are here, whatever. And I say, oh, that's fascinating. And then somebody who wants to go visit, they could go visit. Good for you. I don't want to have to drive through Jamaica in America just so anti-whites can say I'm polluting their lungs. Here's your, everybody agrees that we want them. No. Uh, but then no one wants them in their backyard. So she's doing she she's doing the what we were talking about earlier, what the sheriff was doing. She's claiming responsibility for what anti-whites are doing because the country is doing it. If we all are France in here. We all agree. We don't want France anymore. Who would want that? No more baguettes. No more Eiffels. Why would we want that? No, why would I want, as a, as a Westman in America, Southerner, proud man of Virginia, why would I want there to be a France anymore? Oh, only because that's inside of me too, and I realize that? Everyone wants them. And so then she makes this comment about the uh, the windmills that everyone agrees that we want to be green. Why would you take that position? The green. Everyone agrees we want to be green. No, you, you mean everyone uh, agrees that we don't want to have consistent electricity? No, I don't think so. I'm going to push back on that a little bit. In fact, I'm going to push your ass back in the in kitchen and shut your mouth, Marie Le Pen. Tout le monde est d'accord pour qu'il y en ait, mais personne ne veut que... Tout le monde est d'accord, ça va être d'accord. Make me some bread. Put on your beret. And in the U.S., where white nationalist politicians like Trump claim turbines ruin landscapes. And I look at these magnificent fields with these horrible windmills all over them. They start to rust and wear out and look terrible. Oh, it's so true. It's so true. I drive, I drive, so I've driven through PA. And there used to be, there was this wonderful, it's actually... Uh, Western Maryland, PA, where they come together. There's West Virginia over there. And it was this beautiful drive. You would come up and they cut the white people. White people did this. Our people cut through the fucking mountain. All right. Through the mountain. You go to other places and they're like, hey, man, you really want to go on a scary road? You just want to go down to like Venezuela because they make roads like right on the edges of mountains just it just kind of like right on the they kind of just shoveled it out every couple of days they kind of will shovel a little bit more out it's awesome roads man totally scary 300 foot fall on the other side uh actually no uh no i don't want to do that i'd rather do it the white way let's just build through the mountain how about that i don't want to i don't want to shovel I mean, maybe they like to do that in venezuela fine uh they want to shovel out a little cow path along the edge and then drive like double decker buses with people hanging off on the side. Fine. If they want to do that. I, I like to do it the white way. We'll just say, Oh, there's a mountain. We'll just conquer nature. We're just going to go through the mountain or we're just going to cut a slash right through the whole thing. There you go. Mother nature. We've given you a new gash. There you go. Mother nature. We're going to fill that gash. Talking about driving through big trucks, big, big white man trucks, big 18 wheelers, multiple, multiple 18 wheelers hooked together, whole train of them driving right through, driving right through. You would drive through this. I would drive through it. I love driving out there. 
I would drive through and you would come up, you would see like this, this like valley open up and it was gorgeous. It was, you could see the farmland just as far as you could see. It was beautiful. You would come down this long road coming off the other side of the mountain. And then you would go out, you would come back up and it was just epic. The scenery now through these like giant transformer looking windmills, like you're like you're walking through a kid's playroom or something and you're trying not to step on the crap that's laid out everywhere so you don't break it. These giant windmills and half the time, half of them aren't running. Half of them aren't even moving because they're broken and they're rusting like Trump says here. In short, as the inevitable showdown between fossil fuels and climate chaos looms, fossil capitalists will fight tooth and nail to protect business as usual, which in the first two decades. Well, of I, actually, now you're getting he's getting close to the truth. That it's the businesses behind the scenes, but those businesses are not white sympathetic. They're definitely not white positive, but they're not even white sympathetic one iota. They're as anti-white, the business interests behind the Republican Party and behind the conservative movements or whatever you want to call them, or patriotic movements around the West, they're as anti-white as the other side. The 21st century has meant aligning with the far right. As Malm and the Zekin Collective write, if the fossil fuel industry was the historical engine... And you know, just just wait for them to say, uh, and, uh, and Malm wrote, but I think Malm is wrong because of this other writer over here. Just wait for the content producers, white sympathetics out there to be doing that. They'll be quoting mom. Got nothing to say about uh, Jason Kuna, three decades of service, massive victories. Nothing to say about this community. Why would they talk about you, Jason, when they can instead quote the uh, the statisticians and the philosophers of anti-whiteism? I don't know. I don't know why. ...of the denial machine, the far right had become the exhaust pipe. So in its quest for a racially pure fatherland, the far racially pure that is the inversion of reality but guaranteed you're going to hear these people uh, white sympathetics and the like implicit or explicit s saying that well we got to support the fossil fuels and here are all the reasons why for the fatherland where'd you get that idea well i watched this anti-white flick over here you should have been hit with it Far right has so far aligned with the power of fossil capital, defending it and using its reach to grow in prominence. But fossil fascism is there not is. the only fire burning Whoa, on the horizon. Fire. As the planet heats up, we're beginning to face another wisp of flames Whoa. from the far right. Ooh. Oh, the specter of eco fascism. I think that's a great place to stop. We can pick it up again uh, at some other time. We're going to take a, a short break. I'm going to be here though. Don't you go anywhere because we're going to come back. We're going to get back to this article. We're going to get back to this article about decriminalizing murder, how it's going to actually happen and how our people make these errors when they view what's going on in the world. I'm going to go deep. It's going to be a deep dive, actual intelligence, not some philosophical Bravo Sierra. OK, actual intelligence, utilitarian, pragmatic intelligence, making it happen. But we're going to play part, if not all, of the great Eminent Reigns next piece. It's the fifth song in the album that he's going to be releasing April 30 with song number nine at 5 p.m. Totally epic. Do not go anywhere. Crank this all the way up. I'm staying here. Don't you go. We'll be right back. Upon a subtle flame that once drowned in the mire cannot be reclaimed. Tarnish the flame and it may rise again and again, but plunge it into darkness and no spark can rekindle its fires. And 
That journey begins by looking within. Masu brought a host of gods to celebrate and feast. Human flesh defiled by some human riding beast. Star Horn began to march to war, grotesque were their desires. But in the old to reports of skyboard fires. The captain summoned Morlin and called out. song number five on the album make sure you head on over to his channel at uh imminent rain on youtube to hear the rest of it totally epic we love this guy we love that he has decided years ago to make this album and that it has become something as glorious as it is god bless you uh, great luke mason imminent ray All right. Where the hell is everybody? Let's have some fun. We're going to get into I'm, I'm going to go back to this story about decriminalizing murder. We're going to first hit the glossary from Go Free 
uh, and the MP for today quickly. Uh, the glossary we have, uh, MIS, M-I-S. It's an acronym. You'll hear us use this from time to time. MIS pretexts. What does that mean? That means that an, anti an anti-white is using what MIS stands for to create pretexts to victimize white people. That's not hard to understand. They're telling you eco-fascism and all this. Do not pick that shit up at all, but definitely don't pick it up when you're not picking up the concepts that benefit you. So what does it stand for? MIS stands for moralize, intellectualize, sentimentalize. The MIS, the pretexts and the creation of such pretexts employed by anti-whites to legitimize and justify the harm they inflict on Westmen and Western civilization. Two, miss pretext is to create, cite, repeat, etc. anti-white pretexts. Can you think of any that we were just watching in this the far right threat? What excuses were they giving? There's a big, a great big one. The world will die. It's our moral duty to stop the world from dying. It is your moral duty. So that teaches you. It's very simple for God's sake. All these people from uh, these, these ant gnats and cult gnats, and they were like, oh, it's just too hard. He's got a language there. Things are too hard to understand. It's very, it's very cringy. It's very, what are they saying over there? The anti eco fascism. Well, that's what we are then. Okay. All right. It's like, it's like they like that the book March of the Titans, but it's really March of the Ass Polyps. That's really what the white race has become, hasn't it? March of the Ass Polyps. Somebody should make a. A book cover with that. Tighten my ass. <laughs> All right. We have the MP. A very important MP. A very uh, Well, important that we cover it. The MP is, and tell me, have you all heard this MP? We're going to be getting right back to this decriminalization of as the, as the segment of the Go Free lesson of the day. The MP here today, tell me if you've heard it. Bottom heavy white women should be with non-white men. You'll hear this in different variations. Heavy set white women, curvy white women, right? You hear this in various iterations. Meme pathogen, an idea that is that is given. And and you'll hear. I, mean, I, I heard it as a young man. You'll hear teenagers talk about, it. you'll hear young adults. Well, you know, you are you're you're hippie. You got hips rather than a hippie, right? You got hips, you're hippie. So you know, it's uh, you should probably go for the non-white guys. You know, they'll they like that sort of thing. You got some more weight on you. You got a little bit of a, a chub on you. You got a little whatever it is. You've heard it in various iterations, right? It is all a meme pathogen designed to get white females, especially very young ones into relationships with non-white males. That's all that it's designed to do. That's it. That is, and unfortunately, because of the other poisons of anti-whiteism inside uh, our young white women, they don't endeavor to make themselves valuable as mates. And it's just like the males don't, just like the white guys don't. They don't decide. It's all down to the body. It's all down to the uh, what you look like, and that's what you're going to draw, and that's all there is. And and then at the same time, you're looking. You're not looking to peer pair. You're looking for a guy who's way out of your league in looks. Which, by the way, you don't even want. You don't even want. You don't want to be with somebody that's way out of your league, especially this top like 10, 15 percent of pretty faced guys out there because he's can everybody in town open your eyes all right open your eyes 
Don't be surprised. Oh, she's meeting me again and again and again and again and again and again and again. No shit. Everywhere he goes, he's got women throwing themselves at him. No shit. Get smart. What's the meme curative for this? What's the response to this? How do you turn back these ideas? This is what we suggest. As an anti-white, you'd like that because you want white erasure. MP, bottom heavy white women should be with non-white men. MC, as an anti-white, you'd like that because you want white erasure. You can say biological white erasure. Commentary, uh, the absurd and pernicious idea that bottom heavy white women are limited in their choices of mates to non-white men is just another malicious ruse to get white women into sexual relationships with non-white guys. And no, uh, no shock there that you will find a lot of non-white guys out there, as I have uh, over the years, and they will actually say to white women, Oh, uh, I, I want, I want me some, some big booty. I want me white guys. They don't like that. I want me. So I prize that he's going to prize you for the minute and 30 seconds. He's going to go to town on you. Then he's going to go prize somebody else. And once you get into these anti-white environments, which is what that is, once you get into these anti-white environments, the odds of being able to come away from it and attract a good guy, a good white guy that is commensurate in looks to you deteriorates. They just look at you and they're like, she obviously, she go, she's gone. Even if the guy's anti-white, he's going to look at you and he's going to say, you've gone into this anti-white environment. And that says a lot about you and a lot about how you'll treat the guy in your life, even if he's also anti-white, that you're that anti-white that you would do that. Go into there and date and and, and uh, have sex with them and potentially get impregnated by them and everything else. How you're going to treat him? How you're going to treat in the behave in the marriage and everything? There's just no coming back from that, ladies. Just understand this. Here's the next thing to understand. It is total, and I'm going to be, I'm going to be a little harsh with the words here. It is total bullshit that guy white guys don't like women white women with hips with a with a big butt uh with a little bit more meat on them with a that is all bullshit it is all lies to get you to go have sex with people that will have sex with anything with anything they'll tell you whatever they that you want to hear instead if you if you have a a, a weight issue that you're not happy with the weight that you are, then you can obviously work on your weight in various ways. But very often you have uh, a, a skeleton that is going to be whatever it's going to be. There are far more white men out there than you'll ever know that love curves, that love a woman that has some extra meat here or there or whatever. We love the curves. We love it. Now, we have these, these, these very skinny women, which are not bad either. Very often with next to no hips, not bad either. But those are the ones that guys who, who, are, who find other guys attractive are selecting to put on the runways and who are selecting to put in the magazines and who is but less and less now are they white right i mean let's be real but so when we see when we see that it's sort of like you're seeing again oh there's you know that's what's going to be on the magazine you'll see guys check that out but that doesn't mean a, a white guy isn't going to be head over heels for your body type a stop looking well a if you feel like you got to lose a little bit of weight or a lot or whatever it is, get to it. B, I mean, it's a reality. I'm not going to, I'm not going to sugarcoat that because you've already eaten enough sugar fatty. So if you got to lose a bunch of weight or a little bit of weight, just do it. B, peer pair, look for guys that are on your level. Be honest with yourselves about where you are with your ability to attract and 
find a guy that's or guys that are around that level. Do not have sex with them. Interview them by way of conversations and dates. What are you looking for? A guy who will love you, who will stay with you, who could be a good father, who could be a good husband. He doesn't have to have all those talents today. He's on his life arc just like you are, okay? And then realize that when you two get to the point of having fun, getting horizontal or uh, vertical or inverted or <laughs> all of these different things, when it gets to there, he's going to be going crazy for your body. So enough of this idea that if you have anything but a skinny body and no hips, that that white guy's not going to want you. It's BS. It's total BS. All right, let's get to this article. I'm going to see what you're saying and we'll do this article. Let's get it up on the screen. Again. Let me see what you all are saying. And if there are any financial gifts and we're going to get into this, what we're going to talk about next is really the machinery and how folks go wrong. There's there's a lot to this, uh, but we're not going to spend a lot of time on it because we don't have a lot of time. But nonetheless, over here on Entropy, we have uh, we have three financial gifts. We have the great Yiz, the unifier is here, ladies and gentlemen. She's financially gifting five dollars. God bless you, sweet sister. She says weekly folk tithe to let everyone know my spring picnic date is set for the 15th of April this year. Epic. I'm going to write it down right now. And I already have this in my notes for mentioning in the announcements a little bit later. 15th of April. So, folks, if you can make it, I'm going to read the rest here. It's a white positive family friendly event for grilling at a nice lakeside park in East Tennessee. Email or PM me if you want to claim a spot. Kip and a white heart emoji. Keep it, Promethean. God bless you, sister. Folks, you've got it there. You have all the information you need. Email her, private message her, DM the great Yiz the Unifier. And let her know if you would like to participate. East Tennessee, April 15, I plan on being there because it's glorious. I was there last year. I loved it. And uh, Yiz is amazing. She's truly amazing. If you think she's amazing online, in person, it's, it's a remarkable thing to behold. She can cook. She's funny. She's an MC. She's full of energy. It's wonderful. God bless her. Thank God she's with us. And uh, I will also mention... Again, now that what I'll mention again in at the regular announce, announcements, Discordant Dragons tomorrow, 6 p.m. It's going to be on her Rumble and her Odyssey. Make sure you find out where those are. She'll drop the link or somebody will. And it's a wonderful show. You'll love it as well. And I'll be in the live chat unless there's a there's a possibility I could be doing an interview. But uh, I will otherwise uh, be there. If at all possible, I'll be there. Fit and healthy at any age. Love this guy. $5 financial gift. God bless you, brother. Had some great success at work using the phrase anti-white obedience training. Hey, that is awesome. Thank you for sharing this testimonial. He says, a colleague uh, stated they said it to another person weeks ago, and that individual instantly understood and agreed. Curative contagion confirmed, exclamation point. God bless you. God bless you. Let's get out some 07s. Let's get out some swashbuckling flags. Let's get this man some, some swash. Throw him some, throw him some diamond swash and some flag swash out at this guy. That's total swashbuckling, my friend. I love it. This is one of the things that I that I concluded had to be, it was an absolute requirement 
with whatever we used in service to white well-being was that it had to serve selfishly the individual because they would take it up. OK, it's 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 Joseph Smith. They would take it up for themselves, but it would benefit us communally. My God, how did I think of that? Why? Why weren't there people already doing that in service to white well-being? Why was it? Hey, here's an idea that you'll never be able to tell anyone you live with or near or work with. Shh, yeah, shh, don't tell anybody. But once a year or so, we'll get together and we'll talk to each other in quiet, private about it. <sighs> I mean, I was just like, are you kidding? No, you needed something you could share. You needed something you could share that people wanted to hear that would empower them and then they would share. Anti-white obedience training. That's what we call a curative contagion. It's immediately recognizable even if it's not taught to them. That was also a requirement. I remember telling some of these old timers, I said, this is a requirement. It's got to be this way. And he said, well, that sounds like quite a chore. It's been quite a chore. Yeah, you were right. But it's not it's not nearly as hard, as hard as it is to coin these things, neoterize them, neologize them, and then uh, submit them to the scientific method. As hard as that is, it's not nearly as difficult or as challenging as getting this march of the polyps March of the ass polyps to take it on, take them on. I feel like I would have done better if I would have created these things and then made videos pretending that I was anti-white and used them. I feel like then, in fact, I know for sure. I know for sure. Could you imagine all the hell I went through at PWR with all these people just absolutely refusing to use the kind so many of them just obstinate, not going to do it. Not going to do it. Isn't he working for the ADL or something or APAC? All I had to do was show up and say, oh, yeah, this anti-white here. And here's my video about how you all suck. And then just lace it with the lexicon. And these idiots would have taken it right up, wouldn't they? Just like they're going to take up the ego fascism. No, they'll, mo they'll modify it, too. They'll become eco-Nazis. <laughs> he is back again with another $3. Bless you, sister. I can't stay for the stream tonight, but I wanted to let you know, four people have reached out to me after my appearance on uh, that, that Pete show that she was on to let me know they ordered Go Free. Winning bigly, she writes with a white heart emoji. God bless you, sister. That is swash. Can we get her some flags? Can we get this woman some swash buckling flags? You know the ones. You know the ones. Can we get her some flags? God bless you all for doing that. Yes, is great. Fit and healthy at any age is, any, is great. They, they deserve that. You know, if I were, I've joked from time, I would seriously, if I were able, if we were, if we had a stage and like Yiz, you're like fit and healthy. I would be there with a flamethrower. I would want to be the guy that would shoot the flame across the audience to get them fired up for these champs. God bless you. All right. Let me see about what's going on over here at Odyssey. No, no, we didn't miss any financial gifts over there. And uh looks like nobody tagged me. Let me check out D Live. And uh looks like I didn't miss anybody there either. And no comments, nobody tagging me there. Let me swivel around right here and have a look at uh Cash App. Well, we have the great uh Tamara. She actually financially gift gifted yesterday. God bless you, sister. $2 financial gift. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. That was for some swash. She, she financially gifted me there for some swash buckling I was doing of my own. So thank you very much. Uh, she ended up seeing, seeing that. And uh, we have a uh, great David. David financially gifting... $26.74. Let's get him some 07s and raucous emojis. He hit the $20 mark. Bless you, brother. Deeply appreciate that. 
Mm, appreciate it. Appreciate David. Thank you so much, man. That's over at Cash App. All right. That's all we got. We'll turn back. First last has something for us to read. I just saw in the live chat. Griffin's here. Ivan's here. The Great Slots is here. Hyperborean Dream. And there is Dean Danger. Dean Danger. We need a song for Dean Danger. Bio-spiritual tastes. Sky Cloud is here. Franklin uh, the Destroyer is here. Promethean Promulgation. Great to see you, brother. Archangel. Matt is here. A spider is with us. Rory is here. Hello, hello. He says Curvy is uh, is attractive. I won't read the rest of the sentence, but Curvy is attractive. Violence is life. Hello, sister. How you doing? With violence is life. I did not know this until a discordant dragons. Violence in his life has like what? Six kids? Six babies. Five or six babies, something like this. God bless you, sister. Awesome. Going to be raising them uh, white guilt-free, inoculating them with the go-free method. Tomb of Arminius, a Winged Productions, Ryan, Sam, David, Crystal, Ursa, all these champs in the house. There is even new man after some disagreements is in the house. Simon JJ, Brad C. Wonderful to see you, champ. Oliver is here. Wonderful to see you. Character Matters. What a great name. It so does. Scott is here. I agree, Jason. I don't want America to have a presidential matriarch. Never. America should always have patriarchal leadership. Of course, that's the only kind of leadership there is. Matriarchal leadership is for the nursery room. Double zero, double two. There's Caleb. True champ. Great to see you, brother. Joel is with us. Cheerleader something or other went by. Slow boy is here as well. East Van Tony is here. Of course, the great reptile was here. I think he left. I think he left. But we're going to get over here too. Remember, ask your questions. Make your comments. Tag me. And uh, I will see. Here we have. We're back to this article. Maryland Democrats bill would block people under 25 from being charged with felony murder. And the points we were making earlier uh, are, of course, very relevant. This is not going to pass now. But this and things like it will pass in the future across the West. It's not funny. It's not something to laugh at. It's not something to say that the people passing these bills are uh, of, a, of a different nature and, uh, and they just, this is what they want to, and this is how, all of this sort of thing not profitable to you, not profitable to the people you speak to. I want you to ponder for a moment what it will be like for you to go to your wife, your husband, your kids, your brother, your sister, your colleagues, your boss, your underlings, somebody at the bus stop. You're doing the traffic advocacy. You're out there, you're having conversations. When you talk about these things, I want you to imagine instead of following the typical course of pointing out, and in this case, it's almost uniformly going to be pointing out what Democrats want. Don't just do that. And then showing how they're hypocritical by talking about what Democrats also want. And then giving the examples of that. Laughing about it, snarking about it, turning your back on it, uh, throwing your hands up in the air, these sort of phatic phrases that convey a bunch, uh, even though they are sort of hollow in meaning. Instead, over the course of this week, you're going to bring this up with different folks in your circles. They want to decriminalize murder in Maryland. 
anti-whites want to decriminalize murder in anti-whites up to 25 years of age. And then visualize yourself doing this because this is what you're going to do. You're immediately going to say, this is the white erasure of our norms. This is the white erasure of our mores, the white erasure of our customs. Just like at the schools, how do you get the beatings on the school buses? When you focus on the other races who are involved, you lose the game entirely. You're, you're not going to be able to argue, and it's totally worthless, by the way. We are here, are adults. We pragmatically change our society. We are having enormous success around the world, changing the way not only our brothers and sisters are talking about these things, which is the biggest victory of epic proportions that shakes the earth and changes the poles. And the people who can't see that, it's because they don't have the IQ to see it. That's fine. That's fine. I mean, maybe their descendants will worship me rather than them. Their descendants will sing songs about me and the people in this community rather than them. They'll forget about They won't even know who their great grandfather was, but they'll know who I was. They'll know who Fornell was. They'll know who Slots was. They'll know who Franklin was, okay? They'll know who these champs were because we are doing what's actually changing things. We have changed the language being used by the anti-white regime, pigeonholing their, themselves. Everybody else for generation after generation has been using these other strategies. What would they do here? Well, she's just a black legislator. And the others that are going to join her, well, they're just... They're just, what are they going to be? They're going to be non-white too. And then very often, if they are, if they are, uh, and, we'll, and we'll get into this in the next moment, uh, in a few moments, how I was proven, or I'm going to say proven right, because I'm I'm 100% right about Ye's law. And we need to be spreading that. Let's, let's not, let's make some memes and let's spread Ye's law some more. Naming them ruins you. But a endorsement of Ye's law came from the one of the most unlikely of sources. And I'm going to be sharing. I was so tickled. I was just like this. I cannot believe this. I cannot believe it. You're going to you're going to love it, too. You, I mean, so proving me it's, it's a proving of me right because of all of these these polyps that came and attacked and slandered and et cetera. We'll, we'll talk about it in a moment. But what will they say if politicians who are white join uh, this Charlotte, whatever her name was, Churchfield or whatever, Crutchfield, whatever. They're going to say, oh, well, they're controlled by jaywalkers. That's why they did it. Because like this is like a movie where or it's like where it's like there's a big antenna and there's like a, a signal being emitted. And if you can just cut it down, everybody's like, you know, boop. Well, what the heck? What was I just doing? You know, it's just so reductionist and infantile of an understanding. And I understand that. I understand it. But it's time to accept that you were wrong, that the other people who advocate this, what we call white negativity, demonizing other races, talking about their warts and et cetera, which by the way, includes many wonderful people. There are going to be many wonderful non-white people that you are including in these criticisms. And white people, our, our normal brothers and sisters out there, are going to think of those wonderful people that they know when you criticize the group. And they're going to think, you are a vile piece of shit. And you will be. So what this Charlotte is doing is white erasure. It's, it feels weird, doesn't it? This is what you're going to be telling people. This is white erasure of our norms. Doing so, I promise you, will empower you in maybe uh, the heroes here, they have the ability to really comprehend. So you'll get it. But some folks out there, 
I promise you, in ways that you can't even imagine. It'll serve you in the moment, in the conversation. It'll serve your family, the well-being of your family. It'll serve the well-being of our entire people, Western kind, all the way around the world. I guarantee you. You cannot continue to, if there's nothing you know, you, I mean, even just looking at all the successes we have here, and I can tell you how exactly these things work mechanistically. But, but just ignore all of this, the successes, my explanations over years and years and years, handling the arguments and defeating them, wiping my ass with the arguments. Sometimes it's, it's fun, I admit. Having said that, though, you need only reflect upon the fact that what you're doing is the same thing that failed for your father, is the same thing that failed for your grandfather, is the same thing that failed for your great-grandfather, is the same thing that failed for the great-great-grandfather. I mean, are you? have you had enough? How many years of your life are you going to want to look dumb? You're, you are falling for what's called the sunk cost fallacy. And we heard uh, Mark Collett himself repeat the sunk cost fallacy in my final show uh, with him, where I was painted as a, a representative of APAC uh, and, uh, and many other problems with that. But Mark himself said that you need to go out into the world and say these things that harm you so that people who are saying these things that harm you personally, harm your family, harm your reputation, so that the other people doing it know they're not alone. Now, you can go back and watch that. That's not verbatim, but that was nonetheless what was said. People have gone down this path. We need more people to go out there so that you know you're not alone and ruin your life. Because that's the outcome, Ye's Law, which is where we connect this conversation to the one that's coming in a moment. You're going to guess. Guess, who do you think made a statement that 100% endorses my yay's law? Who? You can place some guesses. It's unlikely place. Somebody, people will probably get it, but nonetheless. So here's what's, here's what, that's what you're going to do. That is what you can do pragmatically. It's not just about me talking uh, so that you think I'm right. It's about you going out into the world and improving your life. You, your family, our people, our countries. Now, what is what is happening here when folks look at this scenario in Maryland right now? I will tell you that though not today will this pass, in the future, and not some remote future, this exact kind of scenario with this with this woman here charlotte crutchfield that exact she's there on the right look at her she's happy there look at her she's happy she's squinting the one eye because that's what all demons anti-white demons do you know it's just like Ugh, thinking terrible things about you or maybe she's winking i don't know but they look at something like this here's what i will tell you she will be able to pass, the Democrats will be able to pass decriminalization of murder on the basis of you can't possibly understand the consequences of murder before the age of 25 or through the age of 25. And in the same session, pass that you can take hormone therapy at the age of five, make a decision that you're of a different gender. Now, why is it that most content creators, organizational leaders, oh, not most, all of them, I mean, let's just be real. Let's just be realistic. All of them. Why is it that they don't get that? How do they make the error? No matter how educated or intelligent they may be, it's just not enough, I guess. How do they make the error? Here's how they make the error. Listen closely. The world you can think of uh, sociopolitically as, as sort of like a buffet, as sort of like a painter's palette, all right? Everything on this buffet or painter's palette is always in motion. It's human dynamism. It's kinetic. It's always changing. 
Charlotte here can both hold the opinion for where it serves her. This is the real world. For where it serves her, for where it's convenient, for where it's self-serving, she can say on a Monday, I'm going to pass my law about decriminalizing murder up to 25 because the person can't know what they're doing before that time. And since I'm holding this position and I'm having a conversation with you right now, I'm going to say that, of course, a child at five years of age can't make a decision about what gender they are and that uh, therefore they can start some sort of chemical castration or surgeries or whatever on a Monday. And then on Wednesday, when she wants to pass the law to give the state the ability to force upon parents a child's decision about what gender they are at five years old, and therefore an endorsement of the idea that a child can know what gender they are at five years old or four years old or three years old or whatever it is, she'll be able to say, I totally believe that a child can know and endorse that position and pass that as well. Now, we talk about that in the Go Free Method, that the reason why they're able to do this is because they are not being inconsistent. They are not being hypocritical. There is no double standard. In both cases, the outcome serves anti-white objectives. It could be to directly victimize Western kind physically. In most cases, it is indirect, a, an indirect physical attack and a victimization by way of an attack on what we produce, our norms, our laws, our expectations of behavior. To eradicate that, in this case, with law that's legislated. How do the content creators get it wrong? The reason they get it wrong is they look at this buffet, this painter's palette that's in motion. And I just demonstrated how it can be in motion. And they grab this thing off of the buffet or painter's palette, and they grab that thing, and they hold them up, juxtaposition for compare and contrast. What happens the moment they do that? The more, the more intelligent they are, the more educated they are, they'll be able to speak more lengthily about those two things. But what happens that, that they're compare and contrasting? The moment they do that, they have made of those two concepts, thoughts, situations, etc., observations, they have made them static. They're no longer in motion. They're no longer the way they are in the real world. I've talked about this before when it comes to plotting a course to success. And people will take the what I've referred to various ways as the permanent now. They'll look out at that kinetic energy, at the at human dynamism, and they'll they'll attempt to take a snapshot. And the snap, and I say attempt to take a snapshot because even if we could even imagine a, a human being with a 500 IQ or a super intelligent computer, whatever it is, you'll never be able to take in the totality of that picture. And you need to totally understand if you're going to be able to plot a course through the the totality of that through time. And I'm not saying time and space in the sense of, uh, you know, fantasy. I mean, literal time and space. You would need to have the entire picture taken up, understood, to be able to see from here to there, whatever that objective is. In our case, wanting to recapture our destiny, ultimately, and articulated in various ways. The moment, however, you have made of human dynamism, a static image, understanding, concept, collection of concepts to evaluate, you have failed. That is the permanent now that we see in the thinking 
of all content creators and organization leaders. No matter how intelligent they are, they're not intelligent enough, I guess, because that's the failing they make. Knowing then what I'm able to compute, that these things are always in motion, that there are certain expectations based on trends, the animals in question, the environments in which those animals uh, reside. And I mean animals all the way, you know, we're talking about the human animal all the way through. Understanding that, you have to plot then a, a process that is able to be amorphous, that is able to ride and live within the kinetic energy that is able to adapt and be prepared to take advantage of challenges and opportunities. That is what we have here in the Go Free lexicon and dialectics and all of the work that we do. That is what we have here. So by, by pulling these things off and taking this static evaluation, what kind of conclusions do you have? If you take out, I'll take out this piece, they want to legalize murder, and I'll take out that piece, they want to, uh, they want to convince children or whatever they'll, they'll call it to, to, uh, to evaluate and reevaluate whether or not they're little boys or little girls or something in between, and you hold them up side by side, what kind of conclusions can you draw? You can conclude erroneously then that there's hypocrisy. Uh, you can conclude that uh, you make you can make some erroneous conclusions about Charlotte herself and what she might endorse or not endorse. What might be the next bill that she would bring forward or the Democrats in Maryland or elsewhere would promote and, and want to make into law. So ultimately, as I'm looking at time here, you present yourself with an erroneous picture of our actual environment, the actual tapestry that we have to deal with, the societies we live in, the human beings that we have to deal with. You take this, this erroneous static pictures of it and your conclusions, therefore, that you use to plot a course to some sort of success is three steps now removed from the actual situation that we find ourselves in. Do you understand now, at least a little bit, how we are always failing, those of us who are white sympathetic, are always failing to reclaim any of our destiny? You, you are taking an, an enormously complex machinery of human society and human thought and free will and controlled will, the shit you can't even come close to understanding. And then you come to me and you say, I've got this static permanent forever. And on top of that, which you can, you can only conclude falsehoods that you then say, through these falsehoods, I will conjecture a way to go from here to our destiny. Are you kidding me? But it gets even worse because, and here's the connection. I hope you all understand this. Ask questions if you don't. I will do my best to explain. The way this connects to what I'm about to say, you're going to love it, is that when Kanye West, who now calls himself Ye, when he decides that he's going to throw a tantrum, this was no big, I explained to you all, how right was no white guilt? When Kanye West started doing his tantrum, wasn't everything I said about his tantrum true? Ended up being true? True all the way up to this day. true all the way up to this day and will continue to be true. 
throwing a tantrum. I'm not going to go through it all again. When he started throwing his tantrum and he threw out this accusation against all Jewish people on the basis of their births. And then he tried to hide behind this, this like sickly glaze of Christianity, which is, which is not Christian at all, but tried to hide behind that again and again, like others do, regrettably. And I think real Christians should be really furious with this, this use of the religion this way. What ended up happening? Well, exactly as I predicted it also. And some of you predicted the same things, by the way. We should laud you all uh, who, who, who thought, yep, this is going to happen, and then find out, oh, Jason thinks so too. And then that ex exactly is what happens. Hordes of polyps marched out of their muddy, dank mirrors, their basements out from underneath their mother's skirts, the slums they live in, whatever it might be. They marched out and they said this, even though these people, many of them are self-identified Nazis, came out and made Kanye West, again, proving another point we make here, that their, their unity is not based on the well-being of white people. Their unity is based on the hatred of Jews, which can never and will never do anything for us. They came out, and what did they do? They made Kanye West their great leader, and there are going to be a lot of these cult nats out there, the, what we call antags. There are going to be a lot of them, but in particular, ant nat, cult nat types that are now going to disavow just like I said in the middle of it, they're going to say, well, I didn't tell. Uh, I wasn't one of the ones that worshiped Kanye, but except you were, bitches, except you were. We saw you all changing your screen names. We saw you all changing uh, your avatars into Kanye flags or Kanye faces. We saw that. And I'm not just talking about the Fuentes crowd because there's plenty of them. They all did it too. But even the ones that Fuentes calls wig gnats, uh, they, they were doing it. These ant nat, cult nat, antag types doing the same thing. Comments after comments. Yay is showing us the way. All they have to do is hate on Jewish people enough. Talk about Jewish people enough, negatively enough. And then something horrible will happen to Jewish people. And then what? Well, that's good for these people because, as I told you the other day, these are individuals who have found a scapegoat for why their lives suck. And that's why they get they feel so personally aggrieved when you get in the way and say, knock that off. That's not going to do anything for white people. They're like, I don't care about white people. They just want to hate on Jewish people. We get in their way. So what did they do when I said, this is wrongheaded, this isn't going to help white people? It outed them. It outed them as just serving uh, their selfish rage over having shitty lives that they could blame on a scapegoat and that makes them feel better about not doing anything. Because that's they have no power to make any change. I've already explained like the, the king analogy. Like a king over his kingdom, he can look out at the kingdoms around him. Some are atrophying, some are growing, some have a uh, desire to, to grow into area that his king, that he controls, he's the king over. And he can evaluate what will we do based on these threats to my kingdom. People who are running countries, uh, practicing statecraft, what can we, they're actually in position to evaluate threats. And in this case, you don't have, you don't have a white race, a Western kind, that's, that's a people. All you have for white people are these, like these corporate entities that we call countries full of rabid individualistic white people. And nonetheless, there can be white people in charge of these countries who say they can evaluate the lay of the land. What are the threats to the continuation of this state? Why can they do that? Why does it make sense for them to do that? Because they're in positions to pull levers, to carry out their conclusions and their programs to remedy issues. You 
living in, you know, working at Subway or whatever it is, and there's nothing wrong with an honest job, but you know what I'm talking about here, driving your Volkswagen, working at Subway, whatever, you don't have any power to make any change. You don't have any people to give to them something for them to evaluate as a threat to their people and therefore themselves as individual members of that people. So all you, all these people are doing is selfishly scapegoating a group because their lives, they're unhappy with their lives. They immediately attacked me endlessly. And they said, no, this is the way it's got to be. And this is what, this is what led to the, of course, the big divorce. This is the way it's got to be. Uh, Jason is working for the ADL or whatever it is. Uh, all the, all the other slanders, et cetera, you all know. And it's what has to be done. And I said, do not do this. I even said to Mark in private, I, am, I told him, I said, I'm never going to tell people to do something that will ruin their life. Do you realize if people go out and say these things, their lives are over. You've seen it. I've seen it our in, entire time serving in the white sympathetic sphere. People, one life after another, ruined. No way am I going to tell people that, to do that. So I created, I neoterized Ye's Law, naming them ruins you. And boy, it was materialized overnight. Ye was absolutely destroyed. His entire empire absolutely destroyed. So, and yeah, he still has millions left. And there's more harm to come to him. And there are going to be more times that he uh, steps up into the limelight. But if his empire and billions of dollars can be destroyed, well, your job at Subway can be ruined. So, Ye's Law. All of the attacks, all of the slanders, this is what has to be done. And you have the organization leaders. I'm going to show you right now. You have these organization leaders coming out and uh, big, you know, big names. And they're saying, this is what we got to do. This is hilarious. This is, this is fantastic. This is going to do so much good. Everybody needs to get out there doing it now. And then you have the hot mics and you have everything about how awful Jason is. But you know what? Jason was king right. Jason was right the entire time. Because it was never going to harm Jewish people. It was never going to get Jewish people, and it shouldn't. It was never going to have them thrown out of countries. It was never going to take any power away from, like, honest to God, anti-white Jewish people. And then horrifically, uh, it would be really bad, of course, if it would happen to Jewish people that weren't anti-white. It was never going to do that. Thank God to the Jewish people who aren't anti-white. Thank God it was never going to do that. It was never going to accomplish that. All it was going to do was harm the people that went down those roads. And a lot of people got harmed. And there was one organizational leader that apparently knew and ended up admitting it. Now, there, the other ones, they know it too. They know it too. But there was one who just, this past Wednesday, did you guess right? Nick Fuentes, show 3923 at one hour, 59 minutes, eight seconds. Quote, you attack the Jews, it's game over. Pack it up. Before you even think the thought, you might as well just quit. Pack it up because your life is over. Terminated effective immediately. We'll send your stuff down to the lobby. Bye. And we just called every other business in town, and we've just bought you a tombstone already because it's over. What do you think now? This, this is the number one truckler to the guy, Kanye West, that everybody made their, their God and uh, 
avatar and screen name and argued for him. And, and uh, if not taking him as a literal leader, as a spiritual leader, this is what you do. This is what you have to do. And he knew it all along. All of the others know it as well. What do you think of them as your leaders now? I'll take a look at what you all are having to say. And then we'll keep rolling. But I've got to say, it tickled me very much. Because here you have a totally beloved by his followers. The most powerful thing that Nick Fuentes has going for him are followers that will turn 180s for him every week. If he wants to go north one week, they will say north is the only way to go. And then the next week, if he says south is the only way to go, they will just about face south is the only way to go. That's power. That's power. To have all these to have all these people who are that willing to be that inconsistent and 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 willing to change their views wherever he says this is where we're going to go now. He's telling them to do something that he just said ends your life. Now, why did he say this? Why did this quote come up? Why did this quote come up? Because he was talking about how, and you can go watch it. He was talking about how conservatives, basic bitch type folks, are criticizing, like at CPAC, transgenders. And he was saying it's easy to criticize them because most people find something wrong with transgenderism. So you're not going out on a limb. You're not really doing anything that is a threat by criticizing them. But you go after the Jews, he says, and your life is over. What's he been telling y'all to do? What has David Duke and all of the others been telling you to do? Every single one of them knows what Nick just admitted. Franklin uh, just wrote here on one of his recent shows, Fuentes actually admitted that he shouldn't be seen as a role model. Quote, uh, there shouldn't be more people like me out there in the world in response to a super chat. Interesting. He said he called himself unusual. So let me see what you all are saying. Uh, little Miss Kate has gotten to me, said that some of you are freaking out. And so let's see, who's freaking out about what I'm saying? Uh, Slot says, keep the nerd glasses on so the white negatives finally stop feeling insecure. <laughs> so who, who's feeling insecure? I mean, who's freaking out? I'm talking about the... If, it, if it's not clear, the totality of the white sympathetic sphere who are implicit or explicit, and uh, so that's you know both, and who have concluded as a consequence of content creators, thought leaders, whether it's written or video or just audio, organization leaders who have been telling you that giving you the drug of your life is miserable. You don't have many prospects in the world. And so you're angry. And so individualistically, scapegoat this group of people. Now, I'm being very clear as I possibly can. There are jaywalkers who are anti-white with the best of the or the worst of the anti-whites. There are organizations that, that 
Jay Walkers have started where they have hired nothing but anti-white or I don't know, I'm not, I don't work there, but it would seem that it, they've only hired other anti-whites from their community. Yes, that exists. They're not anti-white at birth. And you do not condemn people on the basis of their birth. For a lot of reasons, not the least of which is to center that people focused endlessly on them, and you can never do anything for our... You're not going to find white identity in hatred of another group. You're not going to find the recapture of our destiny in the hatred of another group. It's for so many reasons, I keep articulating. I know a lot of the polyp marchers don't get it. Probably not the best woman to represent uh, no white guilt, just a heads up. The last chick on the ad. I'll have to, I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> but thank you for letting me know. I'll take a look. I am, I'm guessing some of the people who are freaking out didn't tag me. So I'm okay. So looks like Paul is upset, and uh, looks like maybe Ursa Major was unsure. All right. Well, it looks like uh, Paul uh, left, or at least he said he left. And if you see criticism of behavior, et cetera, that I make, if you see it in yourself, then you should see it in yourself. You should see that you're doing something, in my opinion, that is harmful for you and harmful for our people. And I make arguments about that and if you don't, if, if you're not persuaded by them, then you damn well better have an argument to overcome what I'm saying. This is not just about is Jason saying what I like? If, is Jason affirming the decisions I've already made? A lot of people across, and I think ultimately this is this is one of the old timers was saying this about me, that the white sympathetic sphere needs me. And it has needed me for a very long time. For the one of the main reasons is because I have the fucking balls to hold a mirror up and say, look how ugly you bastards are. Look at yourselves for Christ's sake. And that's some folks are going to say, oh, I'm just fine like this. I want to continue this way. So be it. But you can't, this, this cult mentality of, well, it's been done this way. And even though it sucks and loses and, and destroys lives, we're just going to keep going. That's got to be confronted. So you can you can dislike me all you want. Across the white sympathetic sphere, there's one thing that you need to appreciate, even if you dislike me, is that a guy like me has been needed for a long time in the white sympathetic sphere. A long time. Uh, Biospiritual Taste says, if a female isn't ladylike, she can't hold out for the most masculine man. It is what it is. Well, yeah, but we, I mean, we got to, we got to teach our young women, just we got to teach our, if I'm understanding you correctly, teach our young men uh, healthy ways to behave because they're being taught the opposite by the anti-white narrative everywhere they go. Thank you all for celebrating when we had things to celebrate. Slot saying, play the, the uh, Kurt Angle vid, vid again. Which one was that? First last says, check your cash app. I will, brother. Uh, Angry Snowman. 
two says, how's it going? Thanks for all you do. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. I will be getting to the financial gifts, like for the great first lasts in just a moment. The Polyp Army. Can you imagine being like, well, wait a second, I, I was worshiping Yay. What's the problem? I'm telling you, you should reevaluate. <laughs> I mean, you should really reevaluate. Imagine if you are a, a Nick follower and he said that. I mean, that's just reality. That's just reality. So what I would like to have happen is for the people who attacked me and attacked this community and who said, oh, no, it's not. Everybody's not going to be ruined. Their their lives are not going to be ruined. Con uh, Kanye West or yay. Look at how good he's doing. still in the public eyes, doing interviews, still got millions and millions of dollars. Nothing's great. They can't do it to all of us. You're just working for them. You're just working for the other side. You're just a represent, or no, you're actually one of them. You're actually just a jaywalker, Jason. Never mind the structure of your face and skull and everything else that we can see about you. You're one of them. Where are all the apologies? Everybody getting ruined. Everybody's lives. In that same, where, where that, I think it might've been on that same, show nick was complaining rightly so about people who are opposing what we call anti-whiteism what he calls what, what liberalism getting arrested going to jail all of these kinds of things talking about people from his very own community getting arrested going to jail family problems what do we have here people's lives get better they get hired. They get promoted. They get family members back that they had run off. They start building productive families. What course do you want to be on? I really think I liked Nick back in the day. And I think that that's where he has to go. He's got to go forward to the way he did things when it was like a comedy show and he was he was talking about you know he's doom documenting and and making jokes uh and that's it stop trying to be a it's it's so silly it's so silly to imagine that you're going to uh, climb on top of uh the 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 steed of the people and Take America back. I mean, it's just, it is ridiculous. It's childish. Just go to what you were doing. That's my opinion. Uh, he's going to do whatever he's going to do. And he's not going to care for my opinion because who the am I? But that's just my opinion of it. He could actually be valuable to white people if he would drop the hatred of all Jews. And then this, this claim that, oh, I love Jews. And, you know, and all this other stuff that he said after he says, the negative things. Nobody, everybody sees through that. Come on. He's got to drop that. And in my opinion, and then he'll be, you know, the way he was way back, but way before uh, the um, Patriots day. And he can be valuable. Objectively. Uh, uh, Franklin guess Fuentes. Yes. Good guess. Good guess, brother. All right, just rolling through here. <laughs> Art Acrobat says, I have a minus 500 IQ. Hyperborean Dream says, Jason, blowing minds. I, I, The thing about like blowing someone's mind is that they have to be bright enough to get it either in toto or in part. Because if you're too distant from it, 
And there are people out there who hypothesize that 30 IQ point difference and uh, greater and greater, you can't come anywhere close to even understanding that it just like washes over them. Oh, here's Paul lecturing me. I'm out, man. This is why this channel is hard to watch, says Paul lecturing me. Well, wait, then Paul says I, I disavowed Kanye on day one. Well, then I don't get what he feels lectured about. Ursa Major, you're always asking, who am I talking to? The people who need to hear it, right? If I'm saying that people who wear uh, conical hats are idiots, and here are the reasons why it's harmful to you and harmful to our people and everything, and you wear a conical hat, then you're the one I'm talking to. If you're not wearing the conical hat, then you're not the one I'm talking to. Now, why would I talk to people who don't wear conical hats about the problems with wearing conical shaped hats? Because there are people out there who want them to wear those hats, who are arguing that you should wear those hats, just like they came forward in, in armies of these polyps to say that you should be attacking and condemning all Jewish people. And they're just at, at people all the time, making their arguments. And more importantly, because their arguments are so flaccid, they are pressuring and bullying and with the cult-like behavior. That's why I say to folks, hey, here's what you shouldn't do. Because I'm not going to say to our community that, and people who are passing through or what have you, I'm not going to say, you know what you really shouldn't do? You shouldn't use the uh, the, I don't know, the hyphenated ties for hang gliding because they've been proven to be inferior anecdotally. And so don't use them. Why? Because no one is going to be coming to this community talking about that and hang gliding, saying, well, you should use these very dangerous ties. So I am preparing people because I care about our brothers and sisters, because I actually want to end the victimization of our people. I'm not selfishly looking out at the world saying, and this is, I'm just talking generally uh, to everybody. I don't selfishly look out at the world and say, well, my life is not nearly what it should have been. And trust me, it's not nearly what it should have been. And I am pissed about it. I'm not going to look out at the world and say, uh, well, it's because of that group there, them, and, and that's not going to benefit me. That's not going to benefit our people. That's not going to create a people. That's not going to protect all of the white children coming up behind us. It's not going to do anything for anybody. I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to provide the ideas, the concepts that I have come through reason, logic, and evidence to conclude defeat anti-whiteism. That's my revenge. That's how I get back at these mother. That's how I do it. And we all should feel this way. If we feel this way, then fewer and fewer white babies are going to have to go through this. Piers Taylor, great to see you. Save Western civilization now. Angela, hello, sister. Western civilization says he thinks there's a role for groypers. There absolutely is. Absolutely. I think that the best, I'm telling you, I, if somebody can persuade Nick to do something that is at odds with what he likes and what he enjoys, when he was doing like the comedy show, Doom Documenting, and all of those groypers who want to snicker and etc they were showing up and they were making memes and they were going out and harassing uh, uh folks who were trying to misrepresent or falsely take the leadership against anti-whiteism that was fantastic that was great that was strong for western kind objectively condemning 
Jewish people for the, on the basis of their birth and saying they all got to go, knowing that it ruins your life and acting like it's, it's going to be, he's going to be some sort of a leader to effectuate that in the West is destructive to himself. It's destructive to our people, in my opinion. But somebody he respects, it's not me. It's going to have to come from somebody he respects. And because, like I said, who the hell am I? The great Four Knoll is here. Marlene is here, sister. Hello to you. Well, I couldn't see what Paul. Coke, Coke, is here. Great to see you, good sister. Couldn't see what he was so fired up about. Said he disavowed. He disavowed. Yeah, young Nick. Maybe we should. Maybe we should refer to young Nick as opposed to contemporary Nick or self-destructive Nick or whatever. Uh, Linyan Chin, hello to you. Celtic Jim, great to see you. Well, I don't see any other tags. I'm, if I missed it, please post it again. Wing it says, you're correct, Jason. You are needed, as is your leadership and mission of going free. I argue we need a big tent. I've never seen the enemy throw their radicals and crazies under the bus. Uh, they would 100%. If a radical or a crazy got in the way, and they have, in fact, in the past, got in the way of victimizing Western kind, which is their objective, they would absolutely cut them loose. And they would absolutely demonize them in a heartbeat. They would go through, if... The anti-whites terrorists in the streets setting things on fire and terrorizing people and taking over parts of a city. If that got in the way at all, if white people started saying, look at that, we now see anti-whiteism, we're going to push back against it. The next day, Democrats would order all of those people to be machine gunned in the streets. They would, it would be merciless. 100%. So, and when you also use, you use this phrase, and I don't know exactly what you're saying, so I'm just speaking generally, but you use this phrase of throwing under the bus. Evaluating stupidity and sharing how it's wrongheaded and how it da damages is not throwing people under the bus. If you can make a superior argument, if you can say, for example, why it's good to terrorize non-white children on Omegle, then make that argument. And then we'll let people decide in the white sympathetic sphere who should be heeded. But the problem is, is that so many know that I'm right. And so instead of making a counter argument, it's just, he's a Fed, he's a jaywalker, let's dox him. Uh, let's get, let's tell the anti-whites where he lives and hopefully they'll do him in. That's the response. So there is, and then look at the, look at Winged Productions. Look at the, the intellectual response from Greg Johnson, from Mark Collett, from the, the other writer who's a no name. I, I know his name, but I'm not going to say it. Feigns himself as an intellectual. Did any of these people come close? Total misrepresentation. I mean, an actual thumbnail of me like I was I, I that was the picture of me showing off the window and then putting a pack there and we're brothers forever or something. This is a little bit of a misrepresentation, right? That's not exactly an argument made uh, a back about why one should and then counter to what I'm saying. Gradients of divergence make the flavor of life so it makes sense that there is a place for everyone, Nick or who, whomever, 
and supporting uh, what we say white positive uh, light, he says, of innovation. Well, uh, Lin Yin Chen, 100%, if, if we had an, an open environment that allowed folks to contemplate independent ideas and uh, in, and, and arguments that criticize a lot of these you know ideas that have inertia, if you will, if we had that, that would be the best. That would absolutely be the best. We don't even have a situation in the white sympathetic sphere where success and failure is a metric. It is insane. It is at, it's it's almost as if anti-whites are behind the scenes making sure, that we can't have a, a, an open conversation and people are allowed to evaluate ideas and look at success and failure. When you, ha you have decades and decades and decades of failure of these other ideas, and when you disagree with them, instead of an argument, you get death threats. Instead of an argument, you get the hound. And the people, the few people who stood up for me in the PWR chat, uh, they were hounded silent by these same people. They would say things like, oh, you're just supporting Jason because you, you know, oral and et cetera, just the nastiest stuff that people don't want to see written about themselves. Every one of those people should have been deleted by Mark. They should have been banned from the chat. If you ban garbage like that, then you can have a conversation. But that wasn't banned. That was allowed to flourish and allowed to intimidate a descent of failure and, and life-destroying uh, decisions. That's just a reality. And if the, if, if, if the folks, if they don't like it, well, then, I mean, you just got to wear it because you know it's the case. Sky Cloud is here. A uh, wing it is trying to say as a counterpoint, uh, the Chicago seven, they were disavowed by the anti-whites who spoke to the, to the, the big, the masses of white people, the anti-whites already had the power at that time to have anti-whites who were psychotic and would do things like bomb and, and walk into government buildings with uh, machine guns and the like, they already had the power to get away with that. Not, not in toto, as you saw, a lot of these people went to jail, but they did not go, anti-whites who spoke to the millions did not go to the white population and say, oh, it's a good thing that they're bombing. That's a good thing. They told successive generations uh, that, oh, that's what needed to be done. Are we in charge of anything? So when people from the white sympathetic sphere talk violent and or commit violence, all you're doing is confirming the anti-white narrative, right? Now, if we controlled uh, 70, 80% of governance and 90 95% of media and some white radical white people went out and did something uh, we of course and harmed especially innocent people we of course would not be going to the population and saying oh that's a good thing but we would definitely not be confirming someone else's narrative so do you understand the difference between what you've done is you've said here are the things that anti-whites can do, and so therefore we can and also should do them. You're not even viewing the difference in power. You're not even viewing the, the perspective, but the perspectives of from where they speak, from where we speak. You're not even viewing or considering the, the context which exists in every single person's brain about What's going on in society? What's the arc, the narrative, therefore, that are in people's heads? What will people see when they see X, Y, or Z? What will it mean for them? 
already at that point in the minds of vast majorities of white people, given them by the authorities in their lives, their churches, uh, their synagogues, uh, their mosques, the government, the media, their alma mater, they've already been told by the authorities in their lives that there is this evil white race. It's been oppressing the non-white races forever, exploiting them forever. It is the moral thing to do to victimize them. It is the moral thing to do to victimize them. It's in that context that the Chicago terrorists conducted what they did. Do you have that power over the population's mind? Do you now see the error in what you just said? Thank you for uh, not calling me a, a federal agent when you disagreed. Okay, uh, Robert says, posting again, I don't see it under community. Do you have a P.O. box? I would totally send a handwritten letter with an ounce of silver. Oh, well, maybe you shouldn't m mention that part of it. Uh, but I do have a P.O. box, and you can go to knowwhyguilt.org, click on financial gift tab, and you'll see the address for the P.O. box. Thank you for the question. Catherine is here. Hello, sister. Welcome. Alex Simpson's uh, John 1 1 is here. It's the humidity is here. Uh, Winget says he hears me is Amren. No, they won't. I already know. Amren will never heed my arguments. They'll never have me to speak. They'll never heed my arguments because they know I'm right. <clears throat> Brandt for sending large amounts of silver. When the, when the, the armored vehicle pulls up, or wouldn't that be great? You know why that doesn't happen? Uh, Winget says, I hope you can reconcile with folks across the pond. I would I would like to. Uh, I would like for folks to not conclude and, and to not become part of the chorus of uh, federal agent, Jay Walker, uh, rapist, child molester, old person fetish. I mean, all of that garbage. I mean, Jesus Christ. Uh, I'd like for them to drop that I don't see it happening anytime soon. Promethean promulgation, the no name that the no name that feigns himself as an intellectual. Uh, do you have any idea how little oh, I'm sorry, how little that narrows it down? <laughs> I know there are so many of them. It's the one that decided to write a, a, a an article, a big article that also grossly misrepresented me of my video rebutting the misrepresentation uh, by uh, Greg the Tabloid Johnson. All right. Ivan says, what's the beef with Amron? I, I don't have a beef with them. I've been friends with Jared Taylor since I was uh, 18 or 19. And uh, gone to his house plenty of times, and but he is just very firmly of the mindset that it's it's like the data of of crime, the data of genetics, and uh, you can't use concepts that anti whites did not create and then use in the uh, institutions, universities, and the like. So it just never happened. Yeah, I, I used to joke that he'll he'll have a Zionist. I didn't really do this, but I mean, it's funny. Used to joke that he'll have a Zionist speak before me. <laughs> Oops. All right. 
Let's check over here. And we have, get out your raucous emojis, please. Some 007s for first last. Hand over the heart. Some raucous emojis for this champion. 50 white well-being dollars. I am deeply appreciative, brother. Thank you so much for that. 50 white well-being dollars. First last, he's here. He's making it happen. He says right there in the live chat that Amrin is jealous. Amrin, he says, is, is chained to its sunk cost fallacy. $50 from first last. We love you, brother. What a great champion and Herculean hero. What a great day it was when I discovered day before yesterday that Nick himself, the truckler of Ye, Ye's truckler, the chief truckler, Ye's chief truckler said the exact same confirming Ye's law 100%. We also have here Art Acrobats, $4.09. Thank you, sir. And he says, fossil fascism is super surreal. <laughs> Thank you, good brother. We love it. And uh, good, we didn't miss anybody there. I'm telling you, the white sympathetic sphere, even if you hate me, you need me. You need somebody like me to say, this is all jacked up. Look how bad it is so that some folks will be able to say, finally. I mean, you got to see a problem with never evaluating the way you've been doing things forever. That is not white at all. That is not white one iota. And, and, and then even taking, you all see this too, this IRL. That's all that matters, IRL. When I have told you all repeatedly, and these people, they'll never make an argument in response to that. Everything was IRL before the internet. Everything. We were out there. Guess what? It looks like this. They're starting to talk about having sex with children. I guess standing out there with a bunch of people with placards, IRL, wasn't enough. And guess what? It wasn't. It wasn't. We need the right dialectics and lexicon to succeed, to defeat the psychological warfare that's waged against us. We have it here. Spreading it virtually, spreading it IRL, is all beautiful, is all magnificent. But when people say you do an IRL, they're not talking about promulgating this love, hope, and redemption of the go free practice. They're talking about going out into public with ugly banners and ugly signs and screaming at religious worshipers after, as they leave their house of worship because, because that makes great footage for our brothers and sisters in their millions. That's what they're talking about. I never did that, but that's what they're talking about. I did the placards. I did the handing out. I've handed out more leaflets. Oh, there is, there is no doubt. I've handed out far more leaflets than 99% of these people, IRL people. And, they, and I, it was a total waste of my time because none of that was going to help us. We have Matt here, financially gifting $5. Thank you, Matt. And he says, I got mistreated by a white female ticket controller on the bus last week. I knew she treated me unfairly because I am white. Matt, I hope it does happen. We have been dehumanized, especially white males. It does happen. So when this happens, when, when something like that happens, I don't know if you got the opportunity to say it, but just say you could in, you can change. That was another thing about the, the lexicon when it came to the concept to overturn the concept racism. I needed a concept 
that that could on, like on a sliding scale could be more intense, less intense, depending upon how you have to use it. So go use it. You could say to her, you're not you're not anti white, are you? Is that why you're talking to me a little bit differently? You could go from that all the way up to stop being so anti white, bitch. I mean, whatever it takes. Thank you for letting us know, man. I appreciate it. Oh, boy. DB50. You saw the ripples in the water, right? DB50 has shown up speaking with the resonance of gods. 50 put an end to anti-whitism dollars. Most welcomed and most needed, my friend. Most welcome and needed. God bless you, brother. And he says, for white well-being with those $50 testimonial. Thank you so much. Folks, you see, uh, there are no there are no big uh, behind the scenes backers. This is it. This is this is what you're seeing. This for this is what they say are oh Jason's just doing this because that's what a man in my age and my talent and my ability. This is the sum of money that I I would grift for. Are you joking? Every one of these pennies, every one of these dollars is love for Western kind that I take with the love that I bring and we put it together. And we fight for our people. That's what it is to me. For grit, just a grifter. Somebody early in the chat said the same thing. You really look at me. Look at me. This is it for the financial gifts. Do you think that's what I would be doing for money? Fucking idiots. God bless DB50 and everybody like him, working class people. And I'm not going to stop saying it. Because I appreciate it. I know how hard it is to make a dollar. Thank you so much. Matt, back again with five more bucks. This time he says, I pointed, oh, so he has the rest of the story here. I pointed it out to her and said, you are acting like this because I'm white. You are anti-white. God bless you, Matt. I repeated the word anti-white two times in English and finished by calling her anti-white in Swedish. That's beautiful. Then Matt back with three more dollars. And he says, let's get, let's keep those 07s, 007s for DB50, please. And let's make for Matt as well, throw in the 07s, the raucous emojis, swashbuckling flags, if you will, please, kind members of this community, swashbuckling flags, because this is some big swash, right? In Sweden, Matt's like, I'm not taking any of this shit here. You can say anything. I know the bitch knows English. She'll know anti-white. She'll know what that means. Then I'll throw in it's Swedish as well, just to make drive the point home. God bless you. And DB50's contribution, throwing some diamonds, if you will. Throw some diamonds out to these swashbucklers. And then he says, with three more dollars, she acted like she had seen a ghost. Oh, this testimonial. Oh, oh my God, I love it. I love it, Matt. She acted like she, she had seen a ghost and went from aggressive to submissive and ashamed. Holy shit. Holy shit. Let's get really make it happen. Really make it happen for Matt and this testimonial. This is how we change the world. This is how we do you see the key? for Western kind that opens the hearts to the West, just got turned. Do you see it getting turned? She acted like she had seen a ghost. This, this is in Sweden. This is a country that has a completely different official language. She acted as she had seen a ghost and went from aggressive to submissive and ashamed. She even repeated the word anti-white to herself. Wow. That is, that is BPE. That is big Promethean energy. My God, Matt. That is how you reclaim our destiny. That was the battle. That was a one, that was an epic one battle for our people that Matt had with that woman. What a champ. God bless Matt. God bless. In Sweden, official different language than English. 
I told you this works around planet Earth. Everywhere we have a country. Why is that? Same bio spirit. Do we got it right here or not? We got it right. Let me get an amen. We got it right here. This woman treating him poorly, and he calls her anti-white twice in English and once in Swedish, and totally shames her, turns the tables. This is what beats anti-whiteism. This is what dude bro moment gave $50 to and why. This is what first last $50 to and why. This is why. What else? What else? What are the other, the old ways? What are the, what are these other ways? What would they have said? Nothing because they can't say these things because they'll get arrested. The things they teach because they're ashamed of their ideas because that's why they end up in all those little conferences where they're like, we can't tell anybody about it. We can only be here in the land of the living where we have this shrinking pool of senescent and ostracized people. That's awesome. Total victory. Epic victory. What do they say? What do the kids say? Real? That's real, my friends. That's real. That's worth celebrations. Real? Real? The bus driver was like, oh, fuck. epic. What would you say? Uh, wokester? What are you going to say? Oh, you're just treating me like that because of jaywalkers. She's going to say, I'll call the police. Everybody on the bus is going to say, what a fucking retard he is. Thank you, Matt. That testimonial is so cool. There have been some cool things happen in Sweden. Those are, those are good folk there. All right, we have Dandy. Keep the raucous emojis going. We got a $20 financial gift over here on Entropy from Dandy Westman. $20 hits the mark that warrants 07s and raucous emojis. What are your favorite raucous emojis? Grab that guy. Throw him out there. Grab that guy. What's that guy like? Put him out there to celebrate Dandy Westman. He writes here, in anti-white obedience training, the term legally protected class is used. Would it be beneficial to jokingly or mockingly use, quote, legally discriminated class when referring to Westman for exposing anti-whiteism? Yes and no. It depends. You have to feel it out. Familiarize yourself, go free, treat those MPs inside of you, and then feel it out. Who are you talking to? Who's your audience? If it is the kind of people that you can uh, joke with, uh, then, then absolutely you could say that. If you are in hostile territory, you can make now, but you've got to be like, if it's real hostile, anti-white territory, if you say it, you've got to be ready for the anti-whites, really hostile anti-whites to like call you into, you know, the boss's office and, and say, all right, well, what's going on here? You know, what's going on there, dandy? What do you got to, you got a kind of a complaint with the, so that can happen there. But yeah, depending on your audience, you absolutely, absolutely. But use it as, as a way to deliver more of the lexicon and the dialectics we use in Go Free, right? So you can get, get a laugh. Or if you're sharing these things and it's creating a vibe that's a bit too serious for your audience, you can see, you know, they're like, oof, this is getting... Then you throw out something maybe like that to get a laugh. So that, that's a great. And then he says, example, when asking a question in a corporate setting, starting with as a member of a legally discriminated class. Well, I have been in environments where the people, even, even the anti-whites there, they really didn't want to, they, they weren't as gone. They didn't see it as like a religion that people get sacrificed to where I could say, a, I could pose a question like that, but just be careful because hardcore anti-whites, they will, they will feel compelled to challenge you. And that, how can I say, 
not not to turn back that you are not legally discriminated against, uh, but to challenge whether or not it's not rightly so. So just be aware of that. But thank you very much. $20. We're blank over there on Odyssey. And uh, we are uh, blank on D Live, it looks like. Uh, looks like they wanting the chest opened. I don't know. Maybe yes, I can't quite see. And then Simp No More says, oh, I like what Simp No More wrote. Nobody is as smart as Jason. Now, we know that's not true, uh, but you know it will piss off all the <laughs> all the antags out there, won't it? Okay. Uh, let's let's roll. Let's roll because we're we're burning through time. We want to have calls. It's almost 830 on the East Coast. I'm not going to go anywhere. Don't you go anywhere. We're going to listen to we're going to listen to our one and only for a little bit of this song that he uh, just released recently. And uh, then we're going to click right back and we're going to roll with purpose. Where is it right here? Here we go. So I'm going to start with a reality check, and I'm going to try to put your 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 heart or your psyche at ease by sharing the reality of the way things already were prior to the anomaly called Donald Trump. Prior to Donald Trump, those who care about Western kind and Western civilization could not get anyone elected in any way, shape, or form. We could not, we could not with our dollars, we could not with candidates, we could not uh, by attempting to take over any part of the Republican Party, which by the way, I'm just gonna, I'll step aside and, and for a moment and tangentially say that there was an individual, I won't name him, several years ago, who suddenly came on the scene and vinegar than, uh, than any wisdom, than intelligence, but because of certain factors uh, that, uh, that I guess make him, made him interesting to listen to, garnered hundreds upon hundreds of thousands of followers, and he told everybody to get into the Republican Party, and I told everybody, do not go into the Republican Party, you cannot take it over, they have an unbelievably powerful immune system for everything that is white positive and as soon as they sniff you out they purge you because they've done it many times over the years and a lot of people ended up ignoring me and heeding his advice and attempting to do and waste their time and still some people have after heeding his advice years ago still have this in their heads even though he has long since abandoned that position and has adopted my position. He said it's composed of a bunch of senescent people, a bunch of wizened people in their, in their dotage just waiting to go to the grave and they love when new blood shows up. Just go in and take it over. Well, he went in, took it over, his local district or precinct or whatever it was, and then when they found out that he was white positive, those senescent people just cut his young ass away and they got rid of him. So prior to Donald Trump, we could not get any of our people, we could elect it, we could not get any of our views represented. We, there was no chance in hell of us getting into office. We were already in that position and we had been in that position for the totality of your life. Because my friends, schools and in your high school, your civics class, your government's class, that America has long since been dead. And what happened here on the 6th, and what people are coming to grips with now, and they will still continue to be coming to grips with, is that what they have been holding on to, what they've been holding to their breast, hoping against all odds that 
this great America, this living America, was going to be able to be protected and saved was actually a corpse. And as they moved away and they saw that indeed it was a corpse, that it wasn't ours, that it's long since been dead, their innocence has ended and they are going to be looking for answers. There'll be stages, they're going to go through the shock, the regret, the disbelief, the denial, and then the rage, and then the questions about what can be done. That is where we come in. That is indeed where we come in, and that was the great four null and i was sharing the wonderful sister elaine sabatino and this beautiful this absolutely beautiful it's, it's packed with treasures i've never seen anything like it every page just about i think maybe every page has little pockets and and it is beautiful and different things are in there for sharing and stickering and could you could you imagine i i i see a a, a time when uh, like little little girls and little boys and then and then maybe older girls as well are, are making these kinds of things and this is the kind of class projects they're doing could you could you imagine how glorious that would be truly amazing moving forward moving forward that's something else i i saw when i get picked up that uh that uh, quote from nick that i agreed with him on moving forward not moving not going backward not the way it was, forget about all of that looking in the rearview mirror garbage. That's how you run off the road. So moving forward, we're making everything we make anew is as glorious as we, what we made in the past because it's coming from the same place. All right. We just have to cleanse ourselves of our poisoning so that what we project is, is pristine, is us. And we can use the word pristine the same way uh, that... Uh, the Jews that use the word kosher. It's pristine. It's us. <laughs> All right. Really quickly, announcements. Uh, we already mentioned Yiz Picnic. Reach out to Yiz. It is, I think she said the 15th of April. Was that right? That she had uh, decided upon. And it's going to be in East Tennessee. One day, a glorious picnic with the wonderful Yiz. Direct message her, private message her, email her. Her show, Discordant Dragons, tomorrow, 6 p.m. on Rumble, on Odyssey. Reach out, find out where it's going to be. Please be there. I'll be there, at least for the beginning of it, if I don't end up in an interview somewhere. And uh, we also have here the audiobook. I just want to remind people, the GoFree audiobook, please share it. Uh, please go write a review. If it, I, it should write a review or an opportunity, I think there is to write a review specifically about the audio book and a positive review is going to go a long way. Think about the others, the folks out there that you would like to read this, even sort of like an anodyne review uh, for anybody would be good. You know, the, Hey, if you like audiobooks, this is great. It's clear. The guy clearly speaks. It's got a good pace to it, whatever it is. Right. Uh, so please do that. Please share with people that it's available. Because for a very long time, it's been this, oh, I can't do it. I can't read that much. It's not much, but I can't read that much. I get it. We're busy. I'm busy. You're busy and tired at the end of the day. Okay. Uh, please do that. Please share it. The price, I want to reiterate. So share this with people. If they're like $13.08, what's up with that? What does he mean? Uh, is he going to make it cheaper? Is he going to make it more expensive? I have no control. If you don't believe me, just research uh, books that are available through contractually through aud uh, audible. I have no control over the price. They determine what it is. They can raise it. They can lower, they can put it on sale. I don't know when that's going to happen. The only way I don't even know if, yes, I would have to sign a different type of contract with them to be able to manipulate the price off of those platforms somewhere else that would radically, I would practically just give them hundred uh, percent of the money coming in for the book audiobook uh, so that I could you know offer it for less somewhere else so uh, who wants to do that right give all the money to audible Apple and meta uh, and uh, Amazon no thank you 
I wanted to show you. Let's pull it up. Let's see. Let's pull it up. Let's have a look, ladies and gentlemen, together. I'll, I will continue to look at the financial gifts, your questions and comments. Remember, tag me as No White Guilt on any of these platforms. And please do your duty to be the algorithm, to share this, this once we're done. Obviously, now people can be there live from the beginning. It's done. It's passed. It was, uh, it was wonderful for you, too, I know. And uh, share it so that folks can come to of this information and information that will really make a difference in their lives, right? So hoorah. Let's go ahead and uh, pull that down. And we are going to put the minor changes up to the website. And we're going to celebrate. Oh, it's glorious. I love the symbol is the Eindelin. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? All right. Now I'll shrink me. How do I do that? Like this? Okay. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. NoWhiteGuilt.org. Dignity for all, even Western kind. And so big celebration. Big thank you. We ce we celebrated actually a couple times for Null and because uh, he deserves it, the work that he, he did on the site that you can see here you see that we have a little bit of a written intro as well as the video so it sometimes people they just want to get a little bit bam they want to know what it is and that's it others will read this and then think oh okay well now i'll watch that video that's a whole five minutes long we also have a little bit of verbiage for the going free show as you can see here uh faqs let me come down here we have uh, the playlist where they are. So if you have a family member and they're not interested, they're, they're, they're kind of scared about something that is, is sociopolitical. And uh, we are three-dimensional people. You know, for many years, I was talking about that, harping upon it and how we have to show that uh, because we are just like the rest of our brothers and sisters out there. And uh, you can start off with some of this, some of the poetry readings, some of the health animals, gardening cars, weapons, et cetera, videos. Pick something out. I remember uh, somebody writing me saying that they had shared the Bluebird video. And I, I, more than a few have done this. But the one I'm thinking about right now shared the Bluebird video with a family member that was totally uninterested. No, don't want to hear any about that. Watched the Bluebird, vi Bluebird video and then said, okay, yeah, I'd like to know more about that guy. What's he talking about? So there you have all of that. You navigate this. It's very easy. Now on your phone, these just stack one upon the other. This is the home downloads, uh, and we're not going to get through. And this is not taking a tour of the website today. But what I do want to do is show you here. You have the go free game, the go free game. Now, before doing that, let's jump to the bottom. I want to show you. You get down here. It says pages. Do you see that on the bottom right? You have the go free translator. So let's take a. Now, if I click on that, I think it might. Actually, let me do it this way. So, okay, yes. Okay, so if you click on the GoFree translator, you will see a, a, a basic translator written by the great, the monumental, heroic champion Iberian writer, where uh, you put in a text from a news item on the internet. Now, you can't see it here, but you click there, that's what happens. And then you click translate, and it will translate, which is, which is an exercise you're supposed to do yourself, and this kind of gets you started. And you can translate then the uh, verbiage, the anti-whiteism, the mean pathogens uh, to what should be said. So you're not uh, guilty of, say, racism. You're guilty of uh, heresy to anti-whiteism. You follow me? All right. Epic. So let's scroll. So that you find that down there. So that's cool, right? Where else could you imagine a translator for like one of these <laughs> wannabe political parties, like the one up in New York. Could you imagine that? It would just be like every sentence would be jaywalker, jaywalker, jaywalker. Okay. You can find the other links there too. There are all the books. Of course, you can see. Here's what I want to show you though. Bang. Go free game. You click on that. Now I will have to change this. We'll pull this down and we will jump over 
to the Go Free game. Now, this is what the Great Four know. We celebrated him for as well. He made some improvements on the Go Free game. Uh, and Axis Mundi's uh, exam is over on this Western Kind Games created by the, the Great Four Null. We love him. There it is. You can click here to play the game. And it's one of those, it's like story, a choose your adventure uh, kind of things. If you go the hiking short story right here, it's a short example. It's funny. You can, you can click on this and you can do the right thing and score maximum points by using the go free method. So you can figure out how well versed you are, or you can do things like punch the anti-whites in the gut or something like this. And the police come or the Rangers and, and you get a terrible score, but it's funny. So you could do that. Then we have, this is the lesson quiz. And uh, there's, there's a bunch here to learn. So we celebrated Axis Mundi for this. You can go in here, you can take lesson one, lesson two, and and uh, the Go Free vocabulary test by Axis Mundi. It's all here. Where else do you, please avail yourself of these things. Please share them with folks you're trying to uh, interest in the work that we're doing. These are wonderful things. Big celebration to these champions. Uh, take a quick uh, click on that. Start the game. There is uh, there's music. This is like you're out in the woods. It's awesome. Check it out. Then you have like let's go here. Start the lesson. It's Axis Mundi, and then you have Go Free Vocabulary A1. This is a test of your proficiency with the Go Free Lexicon. You'll be, and why would you take this? Because you're trying to ascertain how much have I absorbed? How much do I know? How much uh, harder do I have to work? All right. Awesome. You get a score at the end. We really appreciate these champions. Love them. It can't get any better than this. Make sure you celebrate both of these guys for Null and Axis Mundi doing glorious things. We're very proud of them. God bless these champions. I've been really wanting to get to that. So happy we did. Okay, cool. And we have... So for those who don't know, I'm going to read... I'm going to read through this quickly... The Great Reptile made the jersey, and he had an unexpected discovery. I now believe possible, I now believe people, especially men, have been fully conditioned to associate jerseys with heroes. They seem to immediately perceive it as a sign of outstanding athleticism and character, and they project those qualities onto the wearer. The next part is where it gets really interesting. Although the team is completely unknown to them, their positive presumptions eliminate any hesitation to inquire about it. This is a way, folks, to start talking completely created by our wonderful champion reptile here, to start talking about the go-free method with a great jersey. Uh, we might be looking into making these things and uh, having them available. Uh, it's because the jersey is unknown. There is no negative perception of rivalry or competition. Every person to ask has approached me with nothing but kindness and respect. It's been truly uplifting. The more interesting response was brought to my attention by someone inquiring about it. They immediately knew it wasn't a professional team and therefore assumed it was a little league jersey. This is something associated with positive community engagement to the benefit of children. This blew my mind because surely others will assume the same. So even if they don't stop to ask, their mind will immediately link go free with something beneficial to their community and wider society. That's incredible publicity. But most importantly, when worn, I no longer represent just myself. I become the representative of an idea and all those who stand for it. And I would say the team, the team of us, where there is no just the people on the stage. It's all of us. We're all on the field. It's in that spirit that I will continue to wear it proudly, conducting myself with the utmost integrity and character, No, not only for myself, but on behalf of all our amazing brothers and sisters. It represents God bless each and every one of you. I will make you proud. He does make us proud. God bless Reptile, his whole family. 
Uh, we love them. Isn't this beautiful? Let's roll over to your comments. It's quite the discovery. We got two financial gifts over here on Cash App. God bless the both of you. We're going to be opening up your comments. Starting off with Kupapa Magic. But first we have I Love Jesus Christ. Financially gifting 10 white well-being dollars. And this wonderful sister says for white well-being. Thank you so much. Thank you for being uh, ever faithful sister. And we have our great in-house philosopher, the wonderful Solots. Financially gifting $2 today. And with those two epic white well-being dollars, he says, if you're being anti-white, that's not okay. And move on. I like that response. I like it. So maybe you're on the bus or elsewhere, you, your teacher, whatever it is. If you're being anti-white, that's not okay. And then move on. You could say that to a group of friends. Or you could Whatever it is, that's beautiful. Well, well written, brother. Great idea as usual. And that's over there on Cash App. I'll keep my eye on that to see if anybody else comes in. We do not miss anybody who financially gifts. Cool Papa Magic says, I absolutely love the way you handled this so far, especially at the beginning when she was saying that she was a queen. My first response was to cringe. Then, okay, so this was a comment on the video of that 18-year-old girl. Do you remember? Pretty young lady, 18 years old, and she's like, why can't we be proud? Remember her? And I said, look, we have to have the ladies in our community get at this woman. I asked them, the guys, stay away because she's going to think you're trying to hit on her. I asked our ladies to reach out. Our ladies responded to try to speak to her because I said the, uh, the antags who uh, hate on Jewish people are going to be at her. And they're going to say, hate the hate this group of people. Here are all their warts. And we will tell everybody you're amazing. And females, you know, they just have that, that approval. And we'll tell everybody you're amazing if you do. And then, of course, she'll then end up repeating that garbage at home. She'll have fights with the parents, fights with friends. She'll be ostracized. Life will go down the toilet. It'll be a bad path from then on forward. Our women, who knows what ended up getting uh, happening to her. But Papa J Magic says, this young woman has lived a life of rejection on a deep level, as all of our people have, and has not been given the tools to speak up about it. Then you said something like, quote, I want you all to see past the bravado here, close quote. And I actually teared up a bit. The pain she must have been feeling in this moment, but also the courage it took to say something about it. I don't think any of us have the right to judge her in that way. Spot on as always, Jason. I'm going to continue the video now. I hope this woman is well and would love to hear how she's doing. I would too. So if we find out, I hope it's good. I hope she's doing fantastically. I hope she heeded. It was bravado. Remember, she was like, I'm a queen. How are they, they going to say that? I can't uh, uh, be white and proud. You know, just this close. It was the bravado, totally victimized her whole life. This close to going down the path to not caring about white people anymore and instead supplanting that with hatred of other races of people. John writes here, I have recently started watching your videos, but I have to disagree with much of your approach. Wow. So let's see what John has to say. We're going to be taking calls. It looks like Mr. V is number one on the list tonight. John says, our end goal is the same, however, and that is to definitely stop the psychological and soon-to-be physical war on white people in the West. I know what you mean by soon-to-be, and I know you would, you'd probably agree that that physical war is taking place. I mean, look at what's happening to white people all across the West, not the least of which is our once great country of South Africa. The approach of empathy and understanding and non-aggression is not one that will ever bring any fruits. Okay, so it appears that John is attributing to us empathy, understanding, and non-aggression, which means that he almost assuredly 
uh, doesn't want to have empathy. He promotes the opposite of empathy, the opposite of understanding, and the opposite of non-aggression. Uh, so he says, that's not going to bear any fruit. Well, it already has. We are the only people having success, John. So you have to you have to deal with that evidence that we are the only ones that have had any success. Uh, talking about how an evaluation, and this goes to the static evaluation of a permanent now, and saying, look at how much the anti-whites control, and they're able to do anything. And uh, at this exact moment, there is no way to outmaneuver them with a moral imperative, with a concept that defeats anti-whiteism. The only thing that can happen now is that they can be defeated with violence, except you don't actually have a way to defeat them with violence and you have no means to defeat them with violence. And once you take your prescription and put it back in the real world where things are kinetic and you have human dynamism, you now have a scenario where law enforcement will come and murder you for even contemplating it, John. Please don't do this for your own good. It's not gonna, it's not gonna affect because I know I'm not gonna do it. Now, what are we actually doing? John, stick around and you can see. Empathy, understanding, and it's definitely non, uh, non-violent. They, what, violence is not gonna recapture our destiny. Clearly, you'll just be killed by the police. But yeah, we have a lot of understanding, but I, I'm thinking you're probably uh, connoting with the empathy and understanding comments that it's like a, a touchy-feely thing that we're doing here. We're just, what are your feelings like? What are your feelings like? No, uh, stick around, see what we do. He goes on, most non-whites do not feel empathy. Or Well, you see, this is focusing on non-white people. And do you really know? It do, do, how does it help? How does it benefit? Wasn't your father and grandfather doing this, saying the same sort of stupid stuff? So he says, he gives his opinion that non-white people don't feel empathy or understanding when it comes to white people. There, we have, there are good non-white people and we want them to participate with us, to put down anti-whiteism. The power, and look at, uh, we, we could name them, we could run down names. But the important thing is that here you have centered other groups of people rather than us. The power struggle is real, and so is race. Uh, power struggle? No, the white race has already been defeated. There isn't a power struggle. What they're doing, what anti-whites are doing, are victimizing us. We don't control any of our destiny for the benefit of our people. White individuals take steps, and uh, very often it's businesses, business owners, take steps to secure their income and increase their income and power but not for the benefit of white people. And of course, race is real. Uh, and are both are genetically predetermined. So this is to the, to the argument that Ant Nats will say, um, do you, do you, are you a, a scientist outside of this observing it? Are you, or are you in the midst of it going to work every day. He says, I believe that in, in what, what levers of power do you control, John? I believe that increasing tensions between races is a much better approach as it leads quicker to racial separation. No, it doesn't. Tell me how it leads to racial separation, John. Did increasing tensions, ha are increasing tensions across the West making things better for white people? And are the tensions more importantly, on the white side of that equation, for a people, the individuals of whom identify their well-being by way of the group's well-being? The answer is no, John. The tension is only collectively pointed by anti-whites at us. And yeah, there are groups of non-white anti-whites that point that 
tension and anger and et cetera at us. But increasing hostility doesn't make a people because you can look to the West across our Western countries and see that no white race has crystal or no white people have has crystallized out of the increasing violence, the increasing hatred. And in fact, you can go to the extreme in South Africa, John. Did that get better for us there? He goes on, white people do not need any other race, including the smarter Northeast Asian one. I, I didn't argue that anybody needs, that white people need another race. Uh, breaking the country up under the platform of political racial separation is the only solution. Tell me how, John. You know what, you know what else would be a nice wish, John, is that we printed the money. We controlled the money supply. That's a good wish. Uh, being able to, and I don't want to give up anything that we made, John, but maybe you do. And uh, it, it'd be a nice wish. It'd be a nice wish uh, that we'd be able to have the power to just separate things. Wonder how that might happen, John. Wonder how that might be achieved. You got an A through Z for us? No, I know you don't. I, and I'm just, I'm being a little like facetious and flippant because I've heard these arguments a thousand times. And then I say the same thing and there's no retort. Breaking the country up. Okay. Only solution. Get there with your perspective. You need, he says, the only way is the only solution in my eyes. And you don't, and you do not get there to breaking up the country, breaking up Western countries. You do not get there with your perspective, Jason. Instead, you need hatred, aggression, and anger to get there. How misplaced is this? Wow, John, you couldn't, you are 180 degrees wrong. 180 degrees wrong from what actually creates a people. As I've been saying the whole stream, John, everybody before you has been doing the hatred, uh, aggression, I guess that's violence, and anger thing aimed at other groups of people. And are things better or worse than when your great, great, great granddaddy started doing it? Are they better or worse? Hatred, aggression, and anger. Wow. Uh, one other thing I'll tell you, John, uh, and I've said it before, I'll say it again. The thing that gets the soldier in the foxhole to fight with his life on the line, those on across the field of battle is the love of what's behind him. No one in their right mind risks their life and limb over something they hate. Nothing. How do I, how do I know that? How can I say that you won't risk life and limb over something you hate? You won't even risk your job. <laughs> you won't even risk your neighbors. You won't even risk losing the woman in your life. You won't even risk any of that. So you're not going to risk life and limb, buddy. Come on. You go to work, you go to work or go to school and tell them how much you hate Jews and how much you hate. Go to work. You go to your boss and say how much everybody should hate Jews and hate blacks and hate Hispanics and hate it and how much you hate them. You do that. No, because you'll suffer far less than life and limb. Social ostracism, loss of your job. Come on, John. He says, Jason, you talk about bringing awareness of white victimization, yet you forget that the current sociopolitical climate has no sympathy for whites and has no problem victimizing white people. So what exactly would awareness do about that? John, have you not been comprehending how we do this? Have you not been absorbing any of the ways that the communication of our victimization to our brothers and sisters, not the radical anti-whites, this is one of the things that John uh, and Tags, Aunt Nats, the rest uh, of that stripe will do when having a conversation, an argument, a debate with me. They will take the extreme character, some anti-white that wants all white people murdered. 
and uh, they'll say, you really think they care about our victimization? Of course not. And I want them to publicly show that. That's what we do. We force them to publicly share that with all of the millions of our brothers and sisters who do care. All those people who come out, who came out for Trump, the 95 or more percent of them do care about being victimized on the basis of race. Their politicians won't say so. That's why they were supporting Donald Trump and gave him the most votes ever. Probably half of them weren't even counted in World of Warcraft. This obsession with being a good person, he actually wrote this. I wish I had read this beforehand. This obsession with being a good person is nonsense. Can you believe how wrongheaded this is? There is no such thing as good and bad. He says there are no such thing as good and bad as both are di dictated solely by those in positions of power. So no such thing should govern anyone. Oh my God. John, I'm afraid you have such an antithetical position to what is actually working in favor of what has generationally failed that I thank you for stopping by and you could just head on back and tell your buddies in the, uh, the communities of hating white negativity uh, how, how wrong we are over here. Good and bad is not dictated solely by the people in power. Good and bad is in the minds of our brothers and sisters, buddy. The Western kind needs a moral matrix to act, especially to act in extremes. If you don't realize that, if you think good and bad is a fiction, holy moly. Good and bad is inside of us. We project it onto the world. That's how, do you think... We oppose rape because people in power said no raping? Oh my God. Do you think that we oppose pedophilia because people in power said no pedophilia for you? Seriously, John? This is when you have people that can hear somebody talking that they know knows more about a subject than they do and is more intelligent it's probably the case that I'm more intelligent than John, but they don't yield. Instead, they say, oh, no, I've got an opinion, too, and it's as good as yours. The only two concepts that matter, he says, are strong and weak. And right now, we are extremely weak. Well, that we can agree on. Western kind is extremely weak. And so you want to effectuate a violent takeover so that we could force a division of the country. Smart. Smart. Just look at how easily blacks have, again, looking now to demonize another race, how easily blacks have been able to completely take over culture with aggression and the threat of violence. This is the exact same, with aggression and the threat of violence. John, go, they will gun you down. You are the demon in the anti-white narrative as a white person who cares about white people. You're not anti-white enough. Well, you claim to care about white people, that you wanna end our victimization. But none of these steps could lead to that. People who go out into the streets and commit violence against Western civilization are in keeping with the ideology. <laughs> you can't go and imitate the violent terrorists who are acting in the name of anti-whiteism and say that it's the behavior that gets them reprieve rather than the banner of anti-whiteism that they fly, John. God damn. Fuck, you're so stupid on this. This is the kind of shit that I have to argue with for years and years and years. They come and listen to me and they say, I've been listening to you for a little while. I listened to you speak there, Jason, but you know what? You're totally wrong. What we need to do is we need to print the money and violently take over 
and we need to force their hands because that's violence is what everybody yields to. Just look at the violence. Just look at how they blow things up. Look at all they get out of blowing things up. All right. Yeah. This is what this is what the average human ape responds to the most. People don't respect those whom they love, but rather those whom they fear. Well, you don't have the opportunity in the anti-white narrative to be loved or feared, <clears throat> legitimately feared, in, in a way that would net you power. People will fear you when you play the antag in the anti-white narrative, and the net to you is death and imprisonment and ostracization from your family. You're thinking movies, buddy. You're thinking movies. You're going to scare them and they're going to say, oh, we, we submit to you now. We submit. I predict, let me take, where's my crystal? I need to get a crystal ball. I'm going to predict bad things for you, John. Bad things. Betty, bad things. Do you remember the, the guy that I told you all the story about? I'm going to take calls in a minute. Uh, I told you the story about... <laughs> Hispanic landscaper and didn't speak English for shit. And I told him, I said, you know, I heard bad things about watering at, at night. And he said, oh, you never water at night. And I was like, yeah, okay, well, but, but why? I'm thinking it's because like fungus will grow. And that's why you water like right before the sun comes up because it gets into the soil. It immediately is drawn up into the roots and fungus can't grow. I was thinking it was going to say something like that, but it was like we were standing outside. It was like a movie. I said, so what happens, you know, if you water in the middle of the night, his face changed. And it was like, even though it was noontide, it got darker outside. And he said, bad things, Betty, bad things. <laughs> and it was like, okay, all right, I won't water at night. Thank you. Reptile, the great reptile writes here, the acceptance of our victimization only exists because we do not love ourselves. And we exactly, reptile, thank you. And we will never find that love and the hatred of others. So true, brother. Men do not risk their life, limb, or fortune out of hatred for the opposition. They do it to defend those they love. And only when that love is greater than your resentment will you finally understand. Oh, boy. Reptile is another one of our geniuses. Whoa, very well written. John should heed, heed that. He says, take the first step, brother, go free. Jubilation Media, great lovely porridge, writes, the good thing about Jason is that we knew without doubt that this would be his response based on what he teaches and his consistency of practicing it. In the white sympathetic sphere, they are constantly fracturing due to disagreements over some thought leader's latest hot take so true porch has spoken brilliantly on this he writes i can imagine some white nationalists are celebrating scott adams while others might be claiming that this is a boomer distraction from the jays constantly changing opinions and tactics is evidence that everything you do fails i understand the resentment and anger that naturally arises when another race is overrepresented in an action that is making your life and country worse that might be terrorism, gang violence, or street scammers. But those feelings, however, those feelings have never resulted in any positive change for our people. Brilliant, lovely porridge. Yeah, I understand that too. Absolutely. We're going to be placing a call to Mr. V in just a moment. If you uh, if you would like to talk, let me know. Magic writes here, you are 100 percent right, Jason. Check our common comment section of Mark Dice's most recent video, the one about this video. It's full of, quote, Scott Adams is based. He's exactly right. I don't like them either, close quote, et cetera, on and on. Jason batting 1,000. I am just out of the park, baby. Watch it go. It, two grand slams in one, out of the stadium. That's what I said. All these people, if you find that Scott Adams is suddenly agreeing with you and you think he's based, you're centering the wrong people. And you also got to deal with this uh, hatred 
this focusing, looking at all the warts of another group of people. You got to stop it. You won't go anywhere. Shauna Shaw writes here, Jason, you are a hero. You called it again with your wisdom. Scott Adams is an anti-white scumbag. It didn't take long for him to change his tune. He never was sympathetic to white people. Kip, Shauna Shaw, one of our epic sisters. Thank you very much. That's a great compliment. I really appreciate that. Yeah, he proved me right. Again, I got it a, a, a thousand percent. Another home run. This time, South Paul. There it goes, baby. Out of the stadium. I didn't hit many home runs left hand. In fact, none during a game. Uh, they were always line drives left handed. We have get out your raucous emojis. Get out your 07s because we went beyond the $20 mark with a $25 financial gift from the one and only. Just read a comment from Cool Papa, J Magic. Thank you so much, champ. Thank you so much. Coming in with lots of wisdom, lots of testimonials, and throwing, this is like the cherry on top, the financial gift, a true advocate changing the world for our people and for white children to come. $25, he says, for he's a jolly good fellow. <laughs> Thank you, brother. For he's a jolly good. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Cool, Papa J Magic. And thank you to everybody who is celebrating that champion right now. This is a, I think maybe a different John uh, than earlier. This one says, one reason I relate to your message is when I was doing cognitive behavioral therapy for anxiety, I learned a key concept called the fighting paradox, which says you can't beat anxiety by fighting it with a negative emotion. Isn't this fascinating? This John. Therapy for anxiety learned that you can't fight anxiety with a negative emotion. In the same way, we can't beat anti-whiteism using negative emotions like hating non-white people. We defeat anti-whiteism by loving our own and affirming our right to defend ourselves against it. Thanks for breaking this down for us invaluable he finishes up with no john you are invaluable for that testimonial god bless you that is wonderful you had to come out and admit that you were having this cognitive behavioral therapy for anxiety to be able to give this testimonial that's a true hero thank you for that overcoming that a lot of people wouldn't wouldn't have been brave enough to do that thank you that self-sacrifice uh it, that it results in a positive outcome for us it's not a sacrifice of yourself when you get yourself thrown out of society and confirm the anti-white narrative. No, something like this, the embarrassment, et cetera, of I'm in therapy. A lot of people do therapy, but still you're going to, uh, in fact, Stefan Molyneux says everybody for therapy, but still, you know, you're going out there, you're telling everybody, yeah, it's, ha you know, I'm in this therapy and it is uh, for cognitive behavioral anxiety and learns you can't fight it with a negative emotion. That's awesome. This, this John, uh, the John before should be listening to this John. Based White, with a very cool name, says this. The brother condemning the son of his mother for being genetically inferior. Jason speaking about whites being anti-white throughout history. Yeah, that was my parable. And I think, I think a lot of people didn't quite understand that unfortunately. Uh, but I will come back to it. I'll try to get a few more of these comments. And Promethean Promulgation said, there is more to the story than I felt was reasonable to share in the middle of the stream. Uh, with my gates, I had to pass through each one unlocked with the master key of go free. I didn't give up on life and living a meaningful life after failing with Ant Nat strategies because I found a community doing something that works. Number two, I gained the courage to stand up to family members that pressured me into an industry that made me feel miserable. Three, can you believe this? This is a testimonial. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this and then we'll go to, this is awesome. Promethean promulgation testimonial. I love it. And then we're going to call Mr. V. There is more to the story than I felt was reasonable to share in the middle of the stream. 
with the gates I had to pass through, you know, like the gates of life. Each one unlocked with the master key of go free, using the go free strategy, lexicon, helping him in various areas of life, improving his life. People, other people will want to do that as well, right? They're not going to want to have what Nick was talking about. Your life is over. Forget it. They bought the tombstone for you. Number one, I didn't give up on life and living a meaningful life after failing with Aunt Nat's strategies because I found a community doing something that works. So he had gone down playing the antag role, the antagonist, like the, the previous John was talking about. Hate them. And a lot went wrong for him, but he didn't give up on life. He found this community instead. Two, I gained Promethean Promulgation talking here. True champion. Please raucous emojis for this guy. Oh, sevens while I'm reading. Swashbuckling flags. This is the biggest swash. This guy, big swash on this guy. Big swinging swash on this guy. Two, I gained the courage to stand up to family members that persuaded me into an industry that made me miserable. Gain the courage to stand up. Three, I connected with people around me for the first time. A conscious decision because of Go Free, which is now my profession. He connected with people because of Go Free. Now his, that's his profession. He, he, he found his profession. Four, I left my job because I didn't want the people I talked to I didn't want the people I talked to to dismiss Go Free over the uh, apostle working a low status job. So you didn't want to face this environment where these are anti whites. Five, get roped into a job after job on false uh, promises and never gave up because I have something bigger than myself I must achieve. And excuses don't sit by. Alexander, he says with this phrase, don't sit by Alexander in Hades. So he's facing job after job, lies, come and work. How many of us? I know me. You got promises about employment. You get there and then it's like, whoa, what do you mean? Where's the job? Where's the title? Where's what I'm supposed to be? Oh, sorry. Maybe in about seven or eight years, you can have that. That's hiring under false pretense. It's illegal. So what? You can't do anything about it not getting him down because he has something bigger he's living for not hating for right in life totally turning look at how he's talking about how this is changing his life i was about to leave my new industry forever and look elsewhere divine intervention straight out of ancient mythology divine intervention which i could only take advantage of with what i learned in go free saved my career saved my career, didn't end it like those other strategies. Seven, I go into an even more difficult job because the former would not allow me to serve white well-being in any meaningful way. Eight, in the new, in the few weeks I've been about, I've seen about as many people leave as I know still work here. If I didn't see myself as among the elect, I would assume I wasn't cut out for it because I see myself as among the elite few. I take every person turning back as a sign that I'm on the right path. Nine. The latest event was for Go Free was God appearing before you and reassuring the dead would be for religion. I engage in the practice of my life improves. I engage in the practice and my life improves a thousand fold conservative estimate. And just as we teach, everyone can still find more anti whiteism undermining their lives. I identify another effect of MPs, and that very afternoon, my performance goes up another level. I made more in a few hours than I would have in a week at my original job. I made more in a few hours because of. Go free being able to identify the mean pathogens than I would have made in a week of my original job. It wasn't because I practiced the job skills more or I learned more theory about the profession. It was 100% the practice to give back my abilities.
that were stolen and love for our people that gives me the drive to use them. And if this job still doesn't pan out, I'll find another place to kick ass so hard. He actually wrote that. <sighs> Holy moly. Straight back, chest out, hardcore salutes to this champion. That is what anti-whiteism has given him. Mr. V, we're going to get you on the phone right now. My, I got chills. I really have chills right now. I have serious chills. I wish I could show you my, my hair standing up on my arms. I have serious chills right now. That is so awesome. I am so proud. This is what I love doing for people. Getting rid of the poison instead of finding another poison like the previous, the John before the John and just sucking at that teat until you're dead. Promethean promulgation, man. You have just secured yourself a place in the stratosphere of our people. Here goes the call to Mr. V. How exciting is that? Hello. Mr. V, how are you doing, brother? And what's on your mind? I am doing great. Uh, I hope you're doing well, brother. I am, man. I, I couldn't be more excited. I, I seriously got chills reading this from Promethean Promulgation. Oh, he's a champ. Oh, and he shows up for uh, GFC events whenever he can. So big thanks to him. Yeah, great. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, speaking of that, by the way, brother, I got a copy of the audiobook, and I encourage everyone to get a copy of the audiobook, even if they already have the book. Thank you for that. Yeah, absolutely. And this is not an excuse for people not to read. You should be doing the reading, and you should be doing the exercises in the book. Um, but that being said, uh, speaking of you know, go free training, we watched the 49th movie for GFC Movie Night. Wow. That is yep. so cool, man. Yeah, and uh, it was a uh, Serpico with uh, Al Pacino. Oh, I've heard of it, but I'd never seen it or, or know any, really anything about it. Oh, it's a, uh, it's supposed to be based on a true story. Um, oh, okay. It's a, uh, it's by a, uh, an Italian American fellow, who finds some police corruption, and uh, you know, then he, he kind of goes. Um, undercover, if you will, trying to expose corruption in that specific division. Mm -hmm. um, and it just unfolds uh, like that. And what happens at uh, at the end, it had quite a few MPs. That's the interesting thing. It was from uh, 1973. Uh -huh. I think Godfather came out in 1972. So this was after uh, Al Pacino got his role in The Godfather. And, uh, you know, that? you find a you know, MPs around police corruption. Uh, one of the cops uses racial slurs. Um, all of the, see, this is the thing, right? It shows non-white criminals, right? Uh, but it shows the white cops being wrong and beating up the non-white criminals when they're not supposed to. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the classic phone books, they don't leave any bruises, all that kind of stuff. Right. Uh, that's all there. It's majority white cops that are corrupt uh, in that movie, mm -hmm. right? So it's got its uh, it's got its issues. Um, but as far as you know, a review of the movie itself, yeah, it's it's well shot and it's well acted, right? And and it is well written. But yeah, all the way back decades, decades, you'll find meme pathogens. Yeah, thanks. it's never been it's never been good like people think it is, right? You want to destroy your favorite movies, just show up for a GFC movie night. I'll destroy your favorite movie. Oh, my God. So true. God bless you for saying that. It's, 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 it's such a uh, you know, tenacious idea, uh, and especially with each new young crop of people that things just got bad or whatever. And then you can see it. It could be an old person. And they're like, well, you know, they could be in their, I'm not saying 60s is old, but, you know, it's old. And, uh, you know, they're going to say, like, well, you know, when... When I was all the way up to 20, it was just fine. And and no, it wasn't. You just started paying attention then. But so thank you for that. So that was back in the 70s. A lot of folks uh, who, who listen to our type of content, not even born yet. And they were already, uh, it was thick and heavy in the movies. So thank you for that. Thank everybody. Big gratitude to everybody who participated. 
Yeah, big thanks to everyone who's showing up for GFC Movie Night because then I take the MPs that everyone notices and the commentary that everyone has and that goes into a file so that we can do whatever we want with that data, right? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, of course, there's the, the cheating blonde MP ah. in the movie as well. So there's this uh, girl that um, uh, Al Pacino's character likes and she says that she's going to marry someone else if he doesn't marry her. So she's cheating on her fiance with him. And then nice. fortunately the character leaves her and just gets with his neighbor, who is also a white woman. So that's a good move for, for, on the writers for writing that, but bad move for the cheating blonde MP. Yeah. Blondes are portrayed in the most negative, disgusting, anti-white way. It is so rare for you to find a good blonde character, specifically a blonde female character. The way blonde women are portrayed in these anti-white movies is the most disgusting, sickening crap you'll ever see. Yeah, and they really go after the the blondes and the blue-eyed and fair-skinned white people. Just, and then this is how this is how we talk about the ethnicity. I'm gonna pass it back so you can keep talking, brother. Give you as much time as possible. But when white people saw that happening, and we behaved anti and anti-white ways, we we saw the demonization and what was happening there. Well, white people who uh, we're all caught up in the ethnic rivalries that you see across all of Europe. They're like, well, those are the those are the uh, the, the Nordic ones, and uh, so what? You know, they're you, they're assholes, and and look at you now. It's you. You could be you could be a white person from Southern Europe, and you're condemned right with those same other white people. So go ahead, brother. Keep rolling up. Yeah, you're right, brother. And I'm not blonde, and I don't have blue eyes. But it's our people, and these are our features. These are traits native to Western kind. Yep. Native Westmen have blonde uh, hair and, and blue eyes and, and these light uh, features. And members of our family do too. This is all our people, you know, and red hair and et cetera, et cetera. I don't have red hair. My mom has red hair. It's all our people. Like, it's we're all one people, right? We have to look out for each other. You might not be blonde, but you're still affected with anti white MPs about blondes. Yes. And those still affect you. Yes. Yes, that's Mr. Beaver. Keep going, brother. Yeah, and that's the way we got to look at it, right? So you have to fight all of these MPs, even if you don't have it, or if you don't think you have it. If it's about our people, it is an MP. And I'll continue. So yesterday, GF training, big thanks to Patrick. Patrick filled in for me for GF training because I had to take my dad to the ER. It's good to know that there's great champs like Patrick that'll help in and will step up and do GF training. And he did great, of course because he knows the material and he practices oh, the yeah. material. Uh, we're still reading the Book of Talent for book club. And after that, we're going to go into Prometheus Rising. And then for the Prometheum chat, we took a poll and it looks like mo most people want to do Prometheus Rising after Go Free. But I also included the option of Go Free with secondary sources. So was, for example, getting to Richard Dawkins material about memes, uh, material about psychology or language, et cetera. Uh, the scientific method, which is a big part of Go Free getting into logic, reason, and evidence. What exactly is evidence? You know, how do, exactly do you construct logical arguments? Things of this nature, all the secondary material, all the, these secondary subjects, so to speak, that are part of goal free skills. And a lot of people seem interested in that too. So there's a lot of stuff to, there's a lot of stuff to do and the training continues. And that's the most important thing, right? It's like a dojo, right? I'm tired of looking at people like on the sidelines. Oh, that was a great move. Did you see what he did there? Those, what, a, what a great move. Get in there, you yeah. crap. And do so do the practice. Yes. All right. It's that it's a practice. No, you don't get to be a do not. We're all sick and tired of do nots. Yes. This do not season is over. It's over. We're at war with the do nots. Yes. Right? Yes. Right? That's that's what it is. Everyone has to do the practice and people have to understand that. You wouldn't be allowed into a Muay Thai gym if you didn't freaking practice Muay Thai. What are you gonna do? Just sit there and watch? It's it's nonsense, right? So we need everybody to do the practice. So get the book. If you don't have the book, right, you can join the Prometheum chat and we'll we'll help you out with that. Um, and yeah, brother, that's that's more or less it. I won't take up awesome. too much of your time because I know the, the show is ending, but uh, thank you so much for everything you do. Okay, but just one thing. Tell us your father is okay. Oh, yeah, he's doing good. Probably, probably another surgery is what okay. we're guessing. All right, yeah. well, we'll pray and we'll send positive energy. Folks, Promethean hails to this champion, Mr. V, and everybody he has surrounded himself with glorious patriots. God bless you, man. We love you. 
Thank you, brother. Prometheus rises and Promethean hits. Oh, amen. I love it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, oh, brother. All right, folks. Prometheus rise and Promethean hails. We're running out of time so quickly. I'm going to look over here. Biospiritual Taste says, which iteration is the audiobook? It's the most recent edition to iteration, iterate, edition to iteration two. Thank you for that question. The Great Lunder is here. Great to see you, good brother. Uh, let's see. Hamilton says, I bought GoFree audiobook. Uh, the day it came out for eight dollars nine cents awesome uh good yeah whenever it's the cheapest get it i i wish i could control it uh does the translator work for just the words or entire sentences i don't know it's a great question biospiritual tastes over iberian writers translator on the website which is totally epic sky cloud says had to tend to a dog be back the next stream awesome uh, the website is awesome says tastes uh and, and jason now i have a lot on my plate, all these activities, reading Go Free and reading Born Guilty. Oh, cool, man. It's big salutes to you. And uh, we're going to have to get ready to to jump off, jump off here in just a second. And want to get to everybody. I know that. Where are we? OK, about 60 seconds. Uh, Bio spiritual taste. Thank you. Great to see you coming on board, making it happen. Uh, the, he said the guy who made the translator is great. He is great. Thank you for that. Wing it, wing it production, sad for Ireland. Uh, I am too, brother. Stephanie Love, uh, John should practice the go free with love, hope, and redemption. Amen to that. Sliding through, 0022 saying great point. And uh, clues under the translator is great. Magic left. I know we have Heidi here. She said the magic eight ball. God bless you, sister. Uh, let's see. We're going to have to jump off. Looks like we are clear there. And uh, we do have big, everybody applauding. Heidi, we're going to read these next uh, stream. Heidi, $25. Light of the Twin Lamps, $10. Folks, it's glorious. This is the way we should always end, rushing out. It is a wonderful thing to serve white well-being with you. Next time we're together, we're going to be reading those financial gifts. I love you all. Let's get powerful. Let's get real. Let's make it happen. God bless you. Let's go free. Mm -hmm.